Oh, cool. Um, I was waiting for the Greyhawk folio to come out. And I was planning on using that. And, and friends started harassing me about getting the campaign. Getting it running and not waiting, yeah. So I made my map, and I used names from off of the Greyhawk map because I had gotten a, there was a, uh, an advertisement in a magazine or something and showed a picture. So I started pulling names, and I thought we'd switch. And after I made the map, I'm like, well, I'm not going to switch now. But then, like I said, it got to... I didn't want to use somebody else's name, so when the campaign changed direction, I basically had the world end up getting destroyed of sorts, and they all got thrown 400 years into the future, and I <laughs> renamed everything. There's only, one, uh, there's only one name that stayed, and that's a forest stuck right in the middle there, the Ruwood. That's cool. I mean, we've all we all had like our pre Greyhawk stories and stuff. I mean, you know, we played for two years before the Folio even came out and just ran adventures, you know. So I, I know the feeling. I waited what seven years, six seven years for Temple of Mithuba to come out for my campaign. Like, when's it coming out? When's it coming out? When's it coming out? Oh, you know? well, thanks, Calista. I understand. Those were the days back then. Wait, wait, wait. Well, Patrick, do I have a surprise for you Saturday morning? <laughs> mm -hmm. We uh, we actually had a battle tech table. Oh, what? Got, uh, oh, Jesus! See, no. see, no. now you now you can talk about that for one hour. <laughs> you don't worry about it. Yep. Bought two four by eight sheets of plywood, cut them down, made an eight by eight table, painted yep. it. Yep, had to be eight by eight. We got some white um, paint markers and made templates for uh, hexes. Covered the whole thing with hexes and then went out and went to every store we could find. It. Sold green styrofoam. Yeah. And cut there all the green styrofoam out. And then we raided ra railroad model railroad shops for all their trees. Yeah, oh yeah, HO trait. Yeah, that's all that we, we had used, back then. We used red Legos for fire. Um, those, you know, how the Legos are like, you know, two spots. Yeah, man. I mean, we, we all those they fit right there neatly into the square. So something. All those back tricks there. back then. And fog, that was easy. You just went out and bought a bag of cotton balls. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's, yeah. You know, lots of good tricks of the trade back then. And it's like, um, you know, we have one or two pieces still left over from the 90s, particularly our Boggy Creek pe uh, a piece. And uh, we got that one a mountain that almost looks like shaped like the continent of Africa. You know, I still have that in, my, uh, in the back room. Just like, you know, back then you're just making, you know, you're making stuff piecemeal, a little here, a little there. So it's all good. I know, I know exactly. All right, what am I doing here, everyone? I'm babbling. Uh, for That's what we're supposed to do here yeah, for two hours. Yeah, Mike yet, no Mike. Yep. That's it. I have to just use my glasses when I need them because otherwise the light reflects on them. you're not going to play for the month that you're gone then? Probably not. That's the... I have to kind of... I will be less present both on gaming and, and on streams and stuff for a month. So I'm trying to do a lot of heavy lifting now before I leave. So so I've been, I've been doing for Blue Box map that is almost done now, I think. it's We're getting there. That's been a lot of work the last few weeks. What is it for some? Uh, it's it's for his uh, Greyhawk Awakening uh, mm -hmm. campaign. Yep. Which is it? Yeah. You know, uh, 
kind of like sea of dust. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember. The dark sea of dust, or whatever you. Air or whatever. Yeah. I call it. Yep. Which is really cool. Cool idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm like, it's been a rough work week, but not that rough. I'm like, what do I hit next? So. Troll Lord Games, join the fray. What color is your sea of dust? What's, what do you mean by that, uh, Patrick? What color is Anna putting on, on the map? Well, um, it's kind of funny that Patrick said that. That was the last uh, update I got from, from John was like, we need to tweak the colors. Oh. <laughs> Have you been cheating and talking to John, Patrick? Yeah. I don't think he's. I think it's a, it's ah, a there we go. Legitimate question, right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's important. Oops. I don't know. I haven't spent too much time on that side of the map, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. We, uh, well, actually, that's not true because I was over in did my Jeff campaign, which was two years. So I was down in the Sheldamar Valley. But they, uh, they didn't want to have anything to do with all that stuff. They were trying to free the country from the giants. So. I don't know anyone who hasn't run the Giants and it wasn't over to Hey Fuzz. I, 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 I'm seriously, I mean, who hasn't run the Giants a part of it at least, right? Um, so it been over in that area. Well, I mean, I had good reason because I had never run any of the giant modules or descent into the depths of the earth or any of that. And that was the whole point of the campaign was that I was going to end them up. Right. In all the modules. And we got halfway through the Frost Giant then it broke up, but at least I got to run the, well, they were going to die anyway, so <laughs> they went, they went marching into the, into the rift, <laughs> guns blazing. And all stood <laughs> on the Rimaraz. They wouldn't shut up. <laughs> and it just, anything they were killing, they were blowing them up, a fireball, you know, just a mess. So then they, they got underground and they blundered their way into the room with the two white dragons. Decided they were just gonna kill them on carte blanche. And that's all she wrote. And yeah, so then the giants on the other side, just somebody was listening to the door. And said, oh, somebody's invading and trying to kill the dragons. So everybody armed up, and it was basically a gauntlet. So they got stuck at the main entrance. To the they, were just, they were in the process of getting pounded. Half or half or more of their spells were gone. They only killed like half a dozen giants. There were like 30 of them waiting for them. Hey, like, could you, could they have a short rest or long rest? Uh, uh, I'm just kidding. Because uh, <laughs> we were playing, we were using half of them. Oh, okay. So it's 30 to 30. Yeah, first, third. first third. What's up, Mike? Hello. Hello. What were you complaining about? Were you complaining about the hockey draft or something, Mike, on Twitter? You were complaining about something. Was it was it the Colts or the hockey? It was a hockey draft, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah tell the, the Black Hawks getting in the morning. Give me a break. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm a lifelong Blackhawks fan. I'm really kind of disgusted with the whole thing now. Carlos and I have had a couple of long hurt hearts about that. Cool. <laughs> What's up, Jeff? Uh, hey, maybe maybe we'll make something out of it. Maybe we'll try to make amends. I don't know. People have very short memories when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yes. Not blues fans. <laughs> oh, yeah. Blues fans, blues fans. 
much as I hate the St. Louis Blues, that's always been one of my two favorite jerseys. It's awesome. It's just a Yeah. It don't change. What's your favorite? The Chicago, the Blackhawks? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great jersey, too. Then the original Ottawa Senators was a really cool one, too, but they changed it like two or three years in, and now it's all kinds of crazy. But... Blue Box! I, great I can't name! Sleep, but... Hello. Tonight, my Greyhawk, Von Moku. Third one we've done. This should be a blast, everyone. I'm coming live since you just came in on the radio. Whoops. And I hit the wrong button. Woohoo! Isn't that <laughs> awesome? Right off the freaking bat. Good evening, everyone. Let me uh, set some things up here. I'm J.K. Lord Gazumba, and always uh, uh, my Wednesday partners are crime, Anna B. Meyer, and... Greyhawk Mike Bridges. Hello. Our third, um, our third highlight of of our own person yeah. in the community's Greyhawk campaign. And first, we've done Rich Longitalis, and we did Assure the Bear. And next, uh, Michael Mossbarger, Von Molku. You probably know him as. Welcome, Mike. Good to see you. Hi. Mike has been on before. On mm -hmm. been on two jousts. So um, we're doing virtual Greyhawk. Uh, and uh, had some fun there and some other things and uh, runs a game and uh, we're going to talk about his uh, and there's going to be a lot of maps going through I mean you got a lot of maps that's really cool I mean oh yeah that's I make uh, try to make as much of that uh, it it's all has to do with the world building that I do um, that, that's always what there, I've done give me a rate credit there I don't, yeah. start with, I don't start with five square miles I start with 500,000 square miles mm -hmm. and work my <laughs> from there so <laughs> but when we were kids we did that we're like we're gonna fill the whole map every square and, uh, right yeah. i'm still I working had, on uh, it yeah. yep. i had grand designs of Hype train all the coming. cities on there i was planning on five to ten pages on each one of the cities and maps and, and i was going through some of that a couple of nights ago and it's like very barren what i have ever actually ended up making <laughs> But I did make the maps. Those you know, had to start with that. Anna will get some inside info tonight because she plays in the game. We'll talk about that. So yes. I'll give away some. Uh, uh, here we go. Look, uh, Patrick, thank you. Uh, you're waving me down, man, which is really cool. But we got a whole ton of great uh, classic D&D reprints. We get over a certain level hype train. I will, of course, give away two sets. All right. Uh, we're doing at least one set. Exclamation point drawing. It's set up. Good to see everyone as we'll start to chat in here about the wonders of of uh, Michael's campaign. And when, all right, so let's just start off at the beginning. I mean, I was 78. I know you're real close. Uh, what I was right around then, 78, 79. I was in junior high school. Yep. Um, one of my friends at the time, his older brother, was given the Holmes edition for Christmas. Yes, Holmes base. And my understanding of how that went down was the paper was torn off. He stared at it in horror and asked mm -hmm. his mother, what in God's name is this? <laughs> and it got stuck under the Christmas tree. And uh, I went over the next day and there it sat. So I asked if I could take a look at it. And uh, what? That's 42 years later. <laughs> You're I still am. looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I've got, the, uh, I've got the original book. The box was long blasted mm -hmm. in pieces. And the dice, of course, I mean, after you roll them 30 or 40 times, the corners started getting round. Mm -hmm. on. So I don't have those anymore, but I still have the original book. Yeah, and uh, that's that's my charmer, too, is Homeless Basic, man. And I, and I said this on the uh, show where we did all the... Uh, how to get started as a DM. I was fortunate. I think that really helped going into AD and D. Just playing Holmes Basic, you know, over and over yeah. and over. I really think that that was uh, that was a, a really good thing. So, all right. Um, so we're in the late seventies. You start that, and then uh, so uh, let's tell the story of map number one. Let's go right to it. Right. And I'll bring this up on the screen. Uh, and it's a funny story you told us, uh, Adam, yeah. just now. This is pretty hysterical, and we want to. Uh... We want to share this. It's only a section of it, and you can see stuck right in the middle, there's a little lake, and right to the right of it is Von Malkiu, which is the uh, <laughs> where the name came from. It was oh, okay, the cool. World, there the you go. The nice. States, uh, the whole mm -hmm. thing. So, but I uh, was waiting for the 
Greyhawk folio to come out, and uh, it just wouldn't come out. And but, but you heard about it that he was yeah. supposed oh, to come yeah. out. It was okay. in the Dragon. We had gotten a hold of Dragon magazines really early. Yeah, on because there was a little there was a little toy store in Wheaton, downtown Wheaton, Illinois, which is out down near where I live, and uh, um, and he. He knew a couple people, I guess, in Lake Geneva, so he used to stock stuff. And as soon as we found about the game, then we were up there every week buying everything he had. Um, but I mean, I had some advertisements that had names, and yeah. you can see on there, Jets you know, of Island, old right Stone here. Fist <laughs> and Celine, and the old Jet Sea, and you know, all those Grand March, the Den Sack, all, all those things that they came off of these pictures because I didn't have the folio. I wanted me to get my campaign going, so I drew them wow. out over a weekend and threw in some of my own stuff. A lot of the city names are my own names, but uh, um, yeah, and then... Uh, Stonefist has never looked so good. Exactly. Yeah. It's cool. So, and that You took was it from way. an ad. You took the names off of an advertisement. Yeah. That is awesome. But and it's so cool. Celine, them, and, so. Yeah. <laughs> Celine and Hone Society are neighbors. That's really right. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I did, we didn't know. I mean, they just sounded good. So I put them on there and then we yeah. started playing. And then, of course, six months later, the thing came out and we were going to switch over to it. And everybody's like, I don't know, I like this map better. And <laughs> so we stuck so, with that. And, yeah. um, and then I ended up, you can see it's kind of shiny. I ended up getting laminated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So didn't get destroyed. So it's, oh, that's awesome. Still, you know, have it to this day. Yeah, that's awesome. And I just took that picture a couple of days ago because I figured it'd be something. No, that's fantastic. Just you can showing... see the uh, you can see the uh, uh, shadowing over there yeah. to the right. Yeah, that's me holding the camera. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> no, that's really cool. That um, that's that's what you did. Um, you know, it's really a, an awesome thing to see that. Uh, you know, you, you took all that care into making uh, making the world yours. You know. No. Um, nothing, no, you know, that's, that's, that's what we all did when we were this age. Um, and then somehow this world gets destroyed. Well, the, the whole point of the campaign was that they were trying to gather together these weapons that were going to defeat this great evil, which, um, for all intents and purposes, you know, you may as well think Mordor and, you know, that kind of thing. Cause I you mean, know, that's pretty much about all we knew and. Right. But I had twisted it and I mean it had all kinds of interesting things with like the alignments. There were there were like gods for the alignments and everything. And well, this guy was one of the demi gods of sorts. And uh he was trying to take over the world and they had these things that they had to collect together that they could use against him. And when they used it against him, they went into battle and of course everything came together and there was this big huge explosion and the characters woke up 400 years later. Awesome. And, and that goes to the second map? Uh, that goes to the second map. So you can kind of see pieces of it. But then stuck there in the middle is that yellow. That is a huge desert, which is nothing but 100 mile an hour swirling winds and everything. That's where the battle took place, was right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. nice. that's what was left over and then everything wow. else was as it's as it's shown so I, that gave me the opportunity to rename everything cool so thank you bill and from there then we we probably played for it for two three more years and then everybody started getting married and moving to different states and all that kind of stuff and so it's just kind of traveled around the world with me ever since mm -hmm. you can see a lot of uh um far eastern names over on that right. uh, eastern yeah. side that was because we had the uh oriental adventures book oh and, yeah uh, mm -hmm. we actually had a side campaign that was going on with that so i kind of segregated nice. it you know you've got western europe kind of stuff on the left side and the uh far east asia on the right hand side so that we could throw that in and everything wait a minute is that Morgard from uh, the fan Fantasy Games Unlimited? Uh, I don't think. Well, if it is, then I somehow managed to name the same thing as somebody right, else. Right, because pretty much everything on there, I made up all the. Oh, uh, that's pretty and funny because Fort there's Fortress Elendar, and then the second adventure he did was Morgard. I guess it's just an ironic thing. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's pretty. Oh, yeah, I mean, you just you try and put together some cool words. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. 
Like yep. you can't just put Greyhawk because that one's taken. Obviously, these are nice okay. maps, man. Yeah. I mean, they're really nicely done. They're, they're great. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's what happens when uh, you, you have a. Uh, I was planning on being an architect at one point, so uh, I was in school and taking architecture classes, and you know, you do your lettering and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I have the same background there. That's I should, should have went in that direction. But. Yeah, well, I'm glad I didn't because I was a lousy one. <laughs> Roger Moore in chat. There you go, Roger. All Hello. Right. I, I need to Welcome. owe you, Roger. I owe 34 minutes ago. Hit the heart button, awesome. Roger, if you haven't, man. It's uh, under the picture, and that'll get you followed. Uh, let me give you, um, you know, I'll get you a nice little, uh, you, you deserve a nice little VIP badge, too. So, yeah. um this went on until what time, roughly? What year? And were you using demigods oh. demi at all, or did you just not get Oh, yeah, I used yeah. all. Okay. And I, I started going to Gen Cons pretty early on. I went to 12, and I went to 13. Uh, there were a couple of them in there I missed. And then uh, once they got into Milwaukee, then I pretty much went every year. But no, I remember uh, for anyone out there who's been – involved in gen con for that long there was a group of people um a guy named len bland maybe from out of minnesota they were doing uh four person adventures at gen con under the name of fez f-e-z okay after a while then because they just kind of beaten the name to death they changed it to zef which is z-e-f and they were for many, many years, I mean, they ran them, and there were, you know, 20, 30, 40 teams of four kind of thing. It was a pretty good-sized thing. Well, I actually played in the very first Fez tournament, and we won, and I got a $5 gift certificate from TSR that I never cashed in. So, Oh, wow. You know, that, <laughs> that will be worth a little bit today, maybe. If and I was also digging through. It was around then when the RPGA started, so I was a charter member of the RPGA. I mailed in my twelve bucks, and, and uh, the, do you know your number? I got the pin. Yeah, I'm like number one ten or something like wow. that. Oh wow! wow. And uh, that is sent, really. Uh, it was several months later. I found an envelope, and uh, inside of it was a because they wanted to do something special for the for the charter members, so they got a little. Uh, gold up, sticker to put on it that says charter member and so you stuck that to it and so i still got all of that but then i think I, I may have mentioned right when the rpg first came out they started selling stuff and uh i had a copy of um one of those four original modules the RPGA did. The Falks modules? Yeah, the Falks. Wow. To the aid of Falks. Only I had a copy that was typewritten in a white envelope signed by Frank Menser. That Ooh. right now, if you were to try and sell it, I've seen it going for as high as four or five thousand yeah, bucks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> five thousand. So you you can go to some more conventions. Yeah, by well, Frank no. yeah. See, that's the problem was I sold that back in the nineties. Oh damn. Bucks. Oh <laughs> man. Knew. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, I yeah. still have my original white box with, you know, Men and Magic and the Wilderness mm -hmm. the Adventures. And I've got Greyhawk, Blackmore, Eldritch Wizardry. I've got an original chainmail all that kind of stuff. And so, I mean, we just, once uh, we started getting into it, that was before the player's handbook came out. And so we were just using a hodgepodge of whatever we could come up with to make oh, the yeah. game work. And, and then that all started. And But all through the 90s, for the most part, I mean, we played off and on. Um, and we all got together at Gen Con every year. That was where we spent four days playing and, it ended up starting to run things. I, I ran the AD&D Open for several years. Oh, cool. Um, and, I mean, the first time Dark Sun came out, I ran the AD&D Open for the Dark Sun. They had a a uh, Forgotten Realms one. Um, they did one that was right around. There's a uh, one of the splat books that came out. was called Eye Beholder. Mm-hmm. And uh, somebody thought that it'd be very cool to do the AD and D open around beholders. So we had big, huge complexes full of beholders and everything for one of them. And um, 
I was going to run one, which I've come to find out is actually a very valuable piece. But uh, Chris Prama, I think his name Chris is. Pramus. Chris Promise. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, he did the slavers. He Chamber. wrote a um, Planescape module called the Cutters. Uh huh. And it was to be run at Gen Con. And I, for some reason, I think I was going to go that year. And then the last minute it fell through because of something with college or something like that. And I just kept a hold of a copy of it. And I've seen several times on uh, like EN World and places like that, people have been sending me emails because they saw that I sold it on eBay. And uh, some guy bought it. And uh, I think. There were four or five others that I had, and Bill Meinhardt bought all of them. Oh, my. Ex okay. Except that one. Huh. He said he had a friend in Maine who was a big Planescape person, and he let his friend sell it or buy it. Um, but now I've had people ask me several times over the years if I kept a copy of it, and I didn't want to ruin it by making a photocopy sure. of it. I wanted to give it to somebody so they had the original one. Um, so, yeah. But I am. Yeah, I ran all that kind of stuff. and. Then uh, 1990, um, I met my soon-to-be wife, and I moved to Cleveland. And for a couple of years there, I didn't do anything. And uh, went into a game store there, and somebody was advertising for a uh, monthly uh, game club kind of thing. Interestingly enough, the name of it was The Club. <laughs> and they met, there was a setter there's a set of uh hotels like kind of dead center in the city just south of it and it was one of the ho holiday inns and they used to rent one of the rooms there every month and so i went down there with the intent of meeting some people to start playing and that's when i encountered magic the gathering yeah. Addiction. and i was horrified i watched somebody play for about an hour and said well this is fun i think i'm gonna head home and <laughs> I never bought a card. I never. Oh, you did. I never Get got some. Into same any same of it. here. It, never. It was you know as soon as they started explaining to me that yeah you go buy cards, and and then they're random and you start building and I'm sitting there thinking oh my god you could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on this. Mm -hmm. I don't yep. have thousands and thousands of dollars and I wanted to run my D and D campaign so I ended up meeting a guy there and he and some of his friends got together once a week at his house. So I got out of that real quick. And then I went and we played there the whole time I was in Cleveland, which was about 16 years. And we didn't play just D and D. We played GURPS. We played a um, couple of different versions of traveler and you know, all those kind of things. I am one of the card carrying members of creating a traveler character and dying in creation. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, he, was big, old into, into, he yep. was big into miniatures, so we played a lot of Warhammer miniatures. And I also discovered the Warhammer fantasy role playing game when that came out, and uh, we played that. Uh, I was digging through some of that the other day too, and uh, Primus uh, wrote one of those editions. Where yeah, our. Um, Carl Sargent actually has written some stuff for it, and I've got some of his uh, Warhammer stuff, and I was reading through it. And nice. He's uh, he is prolific, if nothing else. Awesome. Um, and extremely, extremely uh, creative and everything. So I mean, we played through a lot of that. But then third edition came out, and um, everybody just kind of jumped on board with it. But after about two weeks of reading everything, I had two guys who really, really like to tear things apart. So we fixed to destroy the game. We're going to take every rule that there is and we're going to use it to the nth degree exactly like it's written and see exactly how bad this is going to get. And by the time we got done, it was a couple of years later, um, we'd all gotten up into the mid-20s and character level i've got somewhere around here a 22nd level um let's see you had to start out as a sorcerer then you had to change to fighter then you could go to arcane archer 
So I got all those levels and then something came out in a book called the deep woods sniper. And so I added that on there and everything. And it just, it got to the point where because of what we did with the rules, I remember one of the last fights was against uh, the largest green dragon you could think up and we killed it in three rounds and it had 1500 hit points. <laughs> and it didn't hurt that my first round of attacks was six or 650 points of damage, I think. <clears throat> I never reached criticals. higher than 300 oh, or something. Yeah. With all the criticals that you could yeah. do and all. I mean, I was firing like eight arrows around and I did six criticals. Wow. It just, it was. That's amazing. My, my, then, my highest career is 300. Crow. Yeah. <laughs> 340 <laughs> something <laughs> points is the highest I've ever scored. Oh in, and was in Pathfinder first edition. Yeah. And it's like I said, we tried to do everything. So after that. Yeah. We decided that we were going to play it like normal people, and so we played a couple more years, and actually that one was in Forgotten Realms, because oddly enough, I had two people in that group. When I said the word Greyhawk, they about lost their lunch. Both mm -hmm. of them literally loathed anything to do with Greyhawk, and I never figured it out. It was always the one that I wanted to play in, and so, I mean, time is passing here, and Mike still has not run a campaign in Greyhawk. <laughs> oh, no. As much as I've always wanted to. So, I eventually moved back here to Chicago. Um, I'm in the west suburbs. Anyone who's familiar with the National Accelerator Lab, which is called the Fermi Lab, you can find it on Google Maps. If you zoom in, you'll find this perfect circle. <laughs> um and that's where they did all of those high tech experiments and everything. And I live about a hundred yards from that. So, well, if it blows up, oh. you're first to go then. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. It's, <laughs> supposedly, when I was a kid, that was the number three target the Russians had when they were going to fire. Uh, I don't doubt it. it. I don't doubt that at all. Wow. That's so I got cool. here, and uh, um, I've been playing. I've got friends downtown, and I used to take the hour and a half trek downtown once a week for a while to do that and that got kind of old as the okay. kids were getting older so i bought a camera and started playing online um then i got into um a lot of the frog god game stuff and i actually ran a rap and Athic campaign that was yes. two years so that's during the glory days of Abastor and that yeah, and all um, that. I got all those. All of them. Yeah. In fact, yeah, 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 I, I just got it. But I, was running, I was running that in fifth edition because I had oh. played briefly in fifth edition Abistor. before it. Yep. So I ran at Rappanathic in fifth edition. That was, uh, that one actually took place. Um, I did get uh, a bunch of guys together. We started out with the saga edition of Star Wars. And that went along until we got to a point where we figured out that once you've got a fifth or sixth level Jedi, that nothing can beat the Jedi. And so it kind of <laughs> turned sour for us fairly quickly. And when you're trying to make enemies to fight and it takes three hours to make an NPC up, it was kind of taken up. Holy jeez. So we uh, switched to Pathfinder, and that's where I determined I was going to run Greyhawk. So I started with the uh against the giants 25th level or 25th anniversary module yeah not the 90 yeah the 90 and, uh, and i took that as the basis and i had learned about the living greyhawk stuff and was able to find uh, a bunch of people who had modules interestingly enough i was cleaning out some uh emails uh, for my new computer and everything. And I went back in around 2011, uh, Carlos Lissing sent me about a half a dozen Living Greyhawk Jeff modules. So somehow or another, I made uh -huh. a hold of him at that point. <laughs> so Carlos and I uh, got to know each other a lot you know, better over the, you know, just in the last three or four years. But mm -hmm. And it was just funny to see his name on it. But so I pieced together a whole bunch of different stuff and we started, you know, at first level, and my intention was to get everybody up to the point where they could then get into the giant modules, G1, G2, G3, and then into the descent to the depths of the earth. And that went along until we got about halfway through the frost giant module, and then it broke up from there. So then I ran the Rappanathic, and then COVID hit. And that's where I met all of you wonderful people. <laughs> um 
for a variety of weird reasons. And I won the joust and that's how I got to know Jay. And then Anna was on something one day and yeah. she was looking for somebody to help edit one of her maps. And so she and I worked on editing for about an hour. And then we ended up talking for six more after that. about Yeah, it. that was awesome fun. Yep. That tends to happen a lot after shows. Yep. Just, yeah. yeah, it's great. And then, uh, yeah. and so I'm I playing started, in your uh, game for a couple of years, year and a half, something like that. It's yeah. been now it's been about two years that this, yeah. mm -hmm. but it started with, uh, well, Gary Holian and I'll get back to him in a second. Um, made a comment once that he said Nairon was the most boring country yes. in all of Greyhawk. And I kind of took that as a challenge because I always kind of thought that side of the map was kind of cool. Yes. There you go. So I got that. And then literally like the next, Gavin, I think you guys were talking with Ed Greenwood for one of the first times and he was finishing up and he made a comment about how, you know, we're all getting older and we all need to, if, you, if you've got something to say, you need to start writing it Yep. because all of a sudden time's going to pass and you're not going to have gotten down on paper all of the ideas that you had boiling around in your head for a hundred years. So I uh, started my website which is uh, nyrond.wordpress.com. And I have been building that ever since. And that's where I've Thanks, been Anna. doing all of my world building is with that. And then uh, I just started looking for people to play online because it was COVID and we weren't going anywhere. So um, I got a one guy who was from my Rappanatha campaign who decided he loved how I was running the game. So he said, whatever I'm running, I'm there. Um, and I've had five or six people come and go, um, some short term, some long term and everything. But then uh, I have managed now, along with Anna in my game, um, Josh Pop plays in my game. So and Gary Holian plays in my game. Oh, that's um, cool. Of which yep. I'm uh, that one I'm uh, the most honored of. Yeah. I've been reading That's Gary Holian's cool. words since he was on the old AOL chat room. That's great to hear. And uh, when he asked if I if he if I had extra space, I'm like, what am I going to say? No. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, Fantastic. So to hear. I'm, I'm actually I'm honored to have Gary playing. I am with you know with everybody because I mean I, I anybody that's going to play this weird game with me is you know worthy of my honor or anything. But I mean Anna and I are thick as thieves now and everything. We chat mm -hmm. after the game's over every week. Yep. Um, she's done a couple of things with my helping me with my campaign and everything, which you'll see going forward. But, Excellent. Well, so both right. ways. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's um, and it just goes to show everyone that uh, you can have a lot of experience, or you can maybe or not in Greyhawk, and then just to think that uh, you know, uh, Gary challenged Michael, and he, he, you know, and there you go, and now we got a lot of information about Nyron, which is great because yep, it's kind of but beyond that, we don't have much uh, game wise. Uh, this map is. I mean, really I've, cool. I've, I've pieced together some stuff. Yeah. There's a guy named Rasgon on Cannon Fire. I'm not sure what his real name is. Uh, um, Mike knows. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And cool he, he, uh, he wrote three or four pages about some Nyrond history that uh, just settled well with me. So I used some of that. And the map you've got showing there right now is the Nyrond map from Living Greyhawk. That's what they used, um, and that was off of their website, which you can still find wow. on the Wayback Machine. Oh, you still have a lot of uh, still a lot of available information on it. And I've used, I used the map, and um, obviously a lot of the cities and things in there were ones that they created, and they created the provinces, like you can see the Duchy of Orberend and, you know, Wampham, all those kind of things. So, they, I mean, they kind of put together, I mean, it, it sounded like a good basis of some place to start. And um, yeah. there is a whole lot of, you know, I wouldn't, the modules were, they were okay. They weren't like the Jeff modules. The modules that those guys wrote, and you guys have talked to those guys that ran the uh, 
down in the Sheldamar Valley. Those were by far and away my favorite Living Greyhawk modules. And I used a lot of that stuff when I ran that Living Greyhawk campaign. But so what I did was I made a template of that and I loaded it into Incarnate. And that's the map that you've got right there, was I redrew the map using Incarnate. Mm -hmm. And I layered all of it. So, you know, like all the red lines are a certain type of road and all the white lines are a certain type of road. And the green lines are the ones that separate the provinces. And they're all on different layers. So you can turn them on and off. And um, Awesome. So the campaign then started, and you're now looking right there at the Nat Marsh. That's where the campaign really got going. Um, okay. They all started out in the Adventurers Guild in Realm Ord. And I kind of asked them, you know, okay, where do you think you want to, you know, what do you want to chase around after? Because I've got stories in pretty much all four corners of the country. And one of the guys who I uh, actually met through the, uh, I ran a module on the uh, Living Greyhawk Con, or your Greyhawk um, online tournament that's in uh, October. Mm -hmm. And he was the first guy to join in. And he's like, oh, I was kind of thought the Nat Marsh was kind of cool. So, all right, we'll start off in that direction. So they left Realmord and traveled overland. And you can see on the far left-hand side of the Nat Marsh, there's a yellow dot. Mm -hmm. Out of the Marklands, and the Marklands is something that I use extensively. That's what I thought. I, 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 I um, that is what they called the Reeks which was a small outpost that got put there a long time before the Greyhawk Wars and then forgotten about. And it basically turned into a, uh, as Carl Sargent described, that there were feral people living there because they'd been abandoned. And so I kind of figured, all right, now that Linward has been installed as the king, he's going to try and fix all of the wrongs that his father had done, and he felt that was one of them. So what they did was went back out there, found the place, and expounded on it. And um, I think you've got a copy of the map that I made called Fort Recovery. Uh, is there, uh, I, I have a lot. I will find it. Yep, here we go. So I made that with um, incarnate. Nice map too. And that's where I sent the characters to begin. Essentially with, uh, uh, the Adventurers Guild, I mean, you had a, you've got a yearly, uh, what it was, was you were supposed to pay 20% of the treasure that you gain and you get to keep everything else. It was kind of a way to help with, you know, gathering money to strengthen Nyron and, Sent them there, um, and that's where the adventurers, or that's where the adventures really started. So they, they tooled around a lot in there. I'm and sure. you got an inn, it, a tower, a training location. You got yeah, barracks. there's a yeah. there's a yeah there's a small temple that was too Heronius. Um, okay. There was you know some places to store food. That the the tower was built kind of as a strong point because I mean it's surrounded by lizard men and troglodytes and all kinds of stuff like that and um so i mean they took what was there of the reeks and actually turned it into a more of a of an outpost that had some strength so that they could establish because there's some concern around the world about what's going on and you know being invaded through the nat marsh was something that linward did not want to have happen so but it's on a grander scale, I mean, the thing that I did to kind of start the whole world, usually people make a campaign and, okay, we're in the middle of a of an evil country and we've got an evil king and you know, there's all this kind of thing. And I kind of determined that I was going to look at it exactly the opposite. Nyrond, as the campaign is starting in 591, has gotten, uh, gathered a lot of strength. They're starting to gain economically. Um, their allies are starting to listen to them and um, are glad that they are back. Uh, they've put the military back together again. 
Uh, they went through and basically kicked out all the Fultons that worshipped <laughs> the. Uh, mm -hmm. um, That's awesome. The, the lawful neutral ones, all of the, uh, um. The blinding light, as it were, I guess that's the side of it. And then there is the bright path, which are the ones out of Almor. And those are the Fultons that are lawful now good. in Nyrond. Yeah, they're lawful good ones. And uh, it, cool. it was always kind of, when they talked in the Marklands, that they were trying to keep a tenuous uh, relationship yep, well. with the Pale going because they needed the Pale and the Pale needed them. And I just kind of thought, you know... Might just be more fun to cut the cord. So they scooped them all up, <laughs> nice. put them in wagons. They drove them to the border. They threw them on the ground in puddles of mud and told them if they ever came across the border again, they were going to be they were going to be butchered where they stood. There are a bunch of things that got put together through the Living Greyhawk modules that was kind of interesting. With uh, there's a group of Fultons that are running around in the north of the country kind of doing a uh, guerrilla warfare because they want to try and can keep control of the land that they had. And so there's all that going on up there. And um, But like I said, the, uh, the guys wanted to start out with the Nat Marsh. And right around then was when uh, Jason Zavoda passed away. Right. And I just kind of thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool if I did something to honor Jason Zavoda because, I mean, the last couple of years of his life, he was posting anything and everything he could possibly think yes. of. Yes. And one of them uh, just struck me because it happened to deal with the Matt Marsh and that kind of thing. So it all fit together, but it was something he called the Wives of Encabulos. It was okay. a group of females, uh, necromancers, assassins, specialty priests, who were all female, who were all worshippers of Encabulos, who were trying to infest Nyron with a dis with diseases and I love stuff it. like that and everything. So I kind of twisted it a little bit and made it a little bit of my own, but I still kept the wives. And uh, since then, everybody's kind of been chasing around. Um They've been to, um, and I think I gave you maps for Arnford, which was the first place they really went. Um, and that's, yeah, that's Arnford along the Duntide. Um, oh, and cool. there's, a, there's a halfling village as part of it. Yeah, and, I see that. Um, oh, a halfling village. You don't so, get many of those. Yeah, well, there isn't a whole lot of halflings. That's oh. been one of my... Uh, one of the things I kind of thought, you know, halflings aren't as bad as some people think they are. So I've been trying to reestablish halflings in the world. The same thing. Well, I mean, they're all mixed in, it seems like. Yeah. And to have their own villages. Is yeah. But, unique. and they talked, I mean, you look at the numbers for uh, who lives in Nyrond, and there's a certain percentage of halflings. So I figured, all right, well, this is a good place to squeeze in a halfling village and that kind of thing. So I put yeah. that city together. To wash up in. I love the name. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and there's stories around. You know, I mean, I world beat. I, I world, <laughs> uh, world create to death some things. I mean, that that place there that uh, washed up in, um, has got a chef that's one of the best chefs. I mean, he, he was trained in Ernst and decided he didn't like Ernst anymore, so he came there. And he's, yeah. I mean, so like I said, I mean, I, I go. There's a story behind well, every little name yeah. there. And I, I like to go into that kind of thing. Nice. So they ended up, they went through Arnford. Um, they've been, there's several different locations where they have found uh, cells of these Encabulos priests who are trying to uh, get this whole plague or something going. And uh, these guys have been bouncing around, uh, kind of taking them out. Um I don't know if I gave you a map of Lynn Murray Bridge. Uh, let me take a look. Yep. You gave me a lot that of stuff. Was a, uh, that was a little place that I came up with. Uh, if you go from Arnford directly west uh, to the edge of the Celadon Forest, uh, that's a little tiny town that got put together by a bunch of ex-military people 
Well, the king basically said, you know, go find some land and fire it up. Um, so you've got a, about 50 or 75 ex-military um, that started this. And that bridge was actually built like 100 years before um, because of uh, just because of trade with the Celadon Forest. It's kind of hard to get to the Celadon Forest. So this guy and a couple of his sons decided they were going to build this bridge and not tell anyone about it so that they could get back and forth between Arnford and B2 and the Celadon Forest quickly. And they were getting rich because they could do things in two days where everybody else had to take five or six and nobody could figure out why. Well, then he got drunk one night and let the name go and all of a sudden then everybody started using the bridge and it just the guy's name who built it was Lynn Murray. So it's an awesome. actual Lynn Murray bridge yeah. is a real town in England somewhere. Uh, I just okay. pulled the name off and thought it was kind of cool. So they ended up there and then into the Celadon forest and found some more incabulous priests there. Um, Carlos is on now there, Michael. So there you go. Hey, right, Carlos. Wait. He said, who's this bum you have on for a guest tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you two probably pretty happy about the draft, the, the hockey draft. So, yeah, um, Like I said, Carlos and I had a couple of heart-to-hearts about where the Blackhawks are in the world. Yeah. So, I don't know. If, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll be able to get back on the bandwagon a little bit more with them but, but this is a don't get me started this is a cool story let me see if i can find it on the main and then as i got i'm opening up too many here let me shut up oh. shut a couple of these all right so we're here yeah, so you gotta zoom in all right there's Aaron to left wait a minute where's that's Arnford? gamboge so you gotta go down oh geez sorry Celadon. There you uh, go. I, I There's just your Celadon. Gambush. All right, there we go. So, so there it is. All right. Arnford. So it's here? Yeah, so it's basically right there. Right yeah. there. Okay. Cool. It's, uh, yeah, and Anna's character's from that town B2. So everybody's kind of got a tie to it in their hand. So, like I said, I've just been, I've been creating locations and everything. Well, there's also a secondary story that's been going on. Um, when they were wandering around and uh, going out of the reeks and everything, they ended up saving a uh, uh, family of lizard men. And they actually are now friends with those lizard men. Okay. And uh, the lizard men showed them something that they thought was kind of odd. Um, it turns out to be a, a large stone edifice uh, next to which is a broken archway. Oh. And there were three uh, open spaces in the back of this stone. One of them's a circle, one of them's a diamond, one of them's a star, and it looks like something fits into it. Well, one of the, the lizard men gave them a piece of this, and they remembered, and so they went back to this, and they popped it in, and all of a sudden, some magic started occurring and everything, and then... Uh, they noticed that some uh, hieroglyphics were carved into it that started to glow a little bit. And they so they took them down and everything, and they did a little bit of investigating, and they started finding out that this is something to do with the Earth lamb. So now they've got kind of a secondary thing going on. They ended up in a module that I bought, um, and I've mentioned him, and... Uh, I want to mention him again because I just think that what the guy's written is fantastic. His name's Anthony Huso. Yeah, I know. Uh, he's got a his website is thebluebard.com. Got some good stuff. And he's got a module that takes place on the astral plane called Shelwyn Falls. Mm -hmm. As he describes it, it's the tomb of horrors for character levels one through three. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I sent them there, and it's one of the few modules in the last 35 years that I have used pretty much verbatim. Uh, there was nothing that I wanted to change out of it. I just was able to throw in a little bit of my own stuff and tied the story to it. Mm -hmm. They went there, and they found the second piece to uh, that fits in. They've got the, uh, the circular one, and they've got the 
diamond shaped one. And I think they're still looking for the star shaped one. So they ended up then going to Calistor, which I think I sent you the map for that. Let me take a look. Yep. You're really good at our carnate, I see. That's fantastic. Yeah. I've been uh, picking up as they go and everything. Calistor is. Uh, I spent a lot more time making that city than even Arnford. It's divided up into neighborhoods, um, which are all named in there. You can see the different places. You've got the uh, the fort that is built there. It's all like a wooden palisade and everything. And that's kind of where the government is. But all the rest of the people that live there are, I mean, they made it through the Greyhawk Wars, barely. Um, because everybody kind of abandoned the place. And at one point, people were picking through garbage to get food, and yeah. they figured out how to get food out of the swamp and all that. And so the city is starting to come back. So I kind of just divided it up into neighborhoods, and then you can kind of see right where your right where your mouse is right there. Mm -hmm. That large field is uh, where they play a game called Blood Ball. <laughs> and uh yes it's not like it's not like blood bowl from oh uh, it's more it's more of a i don't know what people call it um there's a thousand names for it but you know you put a ball in the middle and everybody goes out and you try and get the ball and then you got to try and get the ball across the line kind of thing so it's kind of mm. like football but it's kind of it not. sounds like oh, blood of heroes almost yeah but then you know, every <laughs> neighborhood's got their own team and every neighborhood's got their local tavern. And so, you know, you get together and boy, if you if you root for one team, you don't go into somebody else's tavern. You'll get, uh, you know, nice. get beat up and thrown out in the street kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they tool around and uh, actually changed up on them. And when they went to Calistor, instead of just going in and finding the uh, Encabulos cell, they didn't know what was going on. And as it turns out, when they first got there, they met a contact of the thief and he told them what he knew. And so they spent probably three or four adventures figuring out that the cult of Encabulos in town was a bunch of bored women who were being led around by a duelist with a like a 20 charisma. And his goal, of course, was to see how far he could get with each one of them. Whether they were married or not or any of that was completely irrelevant. There were eight or ten of them in this whole thing. That's awesome. And they picked up on one of these women who uh, seemed to stand out. And they chased around after her. And that, that's what they keep kept finding out, was that she was nothing more than a, uh, you know, she's involved in this. And he's getting all these women together so that he can hang out with a bunch of beautiful women and try to have his way with them and everything. And so they're getting to the point where, well, maybe there isn't a cult of Encabulos like we think there should be in town, that it's just this. Some and kind of cult. It's just a, sw ready. a swingers club. So they're getting ready to bail out of town. And Sorry. it's at that point that this girl decides that she wants to profess her love for this duelist. Yes. And they do it in front of the characters and they do it in front of the duelist and all this. And so this is big to do and everything. Well, then the mother comes and grabs her daughter and drags her home. And she gives them a look that would kill. Uh-oh. So she was one. And they're like, okay, what's wrong with her? So then that night they go back to their inn and they're trying to decide what they want to do. And they're woken in the middle of the night and there's a whole bunch of these black skeletons with torches standing out in front of the inn. <laughs> and they're like, well, they got to be here for us, right? <laughs> so they go and they take care of that and everything and they start putting two and two together. Well, the next morning after that fight, they decide they're going to go find out if it happens to be this family. Well, they go and the house is abandoned. And through a series of things, they end up out in the Nat Marsh, and it's the mother who is actually the real priest in Cabulos, and her husband is actually polymorphed. Uh, he was a zombie lord. Oh. And they had more black skeletons, and they had a bunch of thugs, and they went through this big, huge fight. And that's nice. where they're pretty much at right now. But again, in there, they found more information 
about this Earthland stuff. And they took the pieces that they had and they put a puzzle together of sorts and it produced a map uh, that they were able to see the locations of where they had found the other pieces. Oh. And then the third piece is marked. Uh-oh. So it's out in the Anodan Hills. Hey, um, which if you look on Anna's map, those are the hills that are along Relmore Bay. Mm -hmm. I got too many to maps the open. The eastern on side of, uh, Whoops. I got too many maps open. Yeah, you can see them in there. Along the uh, eastern edge of Relmord Bay, um, that's all the Anodan Hills there to the left, south of Corin Flats. Yeah, you're right there. So they're headed out there, and they've been warned that there's a coven of witches out there. Which, of course, in my world building, I've beaten that to death. So. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> there is a uh, coven of witches that I'm not going to say anything more because I don't want Anna to get any idea. Oh, spoilers. So I can. Uh, <laughs> well. So, that's cool, man. Uh, so, uh, some some questions, uh, Rod. Uh, before, so Roger. I don't forget. Roger Moore asked, uh, "Was it easy or difficult to integrate the Greyhawk Wars into your Nyron campaign?" Fairly easy. Um, yeah. I mean, I took a lot of a lot of the Mark lands and and uh, um, Ivid the Undying, all those kind of things that Carl Sargent wrote, and I just kind of went with that. I mean, you know, there's some bits and pieces of things that I don't like. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things I know, Jay, you don't like. that I. Oh, like. yeah. Uh, some of the characters who died in the war and stuff like that. I, I guess I kind of look at that as, you know, people die in wars and he just happened to pick a few of them. And, um, but there's a lot of secondary characters in there who were from Nyron. There's the good men of real fame who were from Nyron. Right, uh, Adventure Group in Greyhawk City. Uh-huh. In Greyhawk City. So, mm -hmm. man, I, I've gone through all those kind of things and looked for anything that had a tie with Nyron. Um, tried to bring in other things. I mean, like Anna's Shield Land stuff, as far as I'm concerned, that's what's going on in my Greyhawk. Um, cool. And I've had, I actually had Katarina, who was kind of running things there, um, helped Lindward create um, or re-establish the Knights of Nyrond. Cool. Which is one of the nice. uh, one of the shields uh -huh. that I made. All right, let me bring yeah. it up. I yep, we made a, a series. I, I helped yes, help she's him. She's done a couple like, of with, uh, Yeah, yeah I made the, a series of, of shields for your campaign. Of Nyrond, oh, nice. Which I've got, you know, it's I, I it's the name is long enough that I gotta actually look it up and it's the uh, kind of a twist on the uh, Knights Templar of sorts, but you know, it kind of goes in a whole bunch of different directions. But it was, it was a knighthood that existed before the Great Kingdom took over Nyron to begin with, and then when the Great Kingdom took over, of course, they washed out all of the uh, the Nyron stuff and incorporated them into the world and turned it into a vice royalty and you know that's been the 400 years of history and so Linward always grew up you know hearing about them and he always told his dad when he was a little kid oh, i'm going to be a knight of nyron when i grow up and all that so well now he's king and he can do whatever he wants so he <laughs> re-established yeah. it so there's like 30 of them right now and they're kind of learning the ropes of how to be knights and He's so, found some people that are lightning bolts erroneous, right? Yep. Why yeah. in five directions? Um, because it looks cool. Just, That's a good enough surrounded answer. by enemies. It's right? just, I, don't know, I guess that was kind of a, a take on. I'm trying to remember exactly where it was, but I, I think it That's might what? have been described in something somewhere about somebody had a, an, an insignia or whatever of that. And I just kind of built off of it. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, a lot of yeah, things. It looks cool. And then, you know, like I mentioned it, Anna threw it together in about 
30 or 40 seconds for me. And, that is really good with that. Looked like, and she said, well, how about this? And I think actually that might have part of been where it was. With she we, yeah, with we took X. like four or five iterations and, and, yeah. and then yeah, you said, was, I like that. So, you know, yeah, because yeah, you had an me, idea and then, yeah, we riffed on it. Yeah. And it, I basically, with, with the stuff that you created um, for your nights, Jay, um, for the character class, I just kind of changed it in, you know. Oh, cool. So, you have, so, so yeah. All so, right. Yeah, you know, I've got a night class uh, for the Knights of Nyron for it. And... So, Rod, Roger, I, I think uh, Michael's close to answering that question, and uh, I'm kind of honored. Yeah. He uses a lot of my stuff. So, uh, but um, this is cool. Let me do the other shield. And that's, I love this one. The Settled on Forest Elves. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I really liked. I and just, I guess you know, oh, kind wow. of just to kind of to answer Roger's question. I mean, yeah, I let the Greyhawk Wars happen. I mean, and, and Nyron yeah. is trying to come back, and they are doing a really, really good job of it. They've got a lot of people who are on board with it. Uh, Linward redid the provinces. He's what's the year in your campaign? Were in league with his brother. Pardon me. What's the year in your campaign? Five ninety one. Okay. So it's, you know, right as things are starting to come together and everything's starting to work and everything, you know, as opposed to everything's mm -hmm. falling apart, you know, everything's working. And what Linward's goal is, is there's stuff going on internally that he wants help in cleaning up because he is concerned externally. And one of the things he's concerned with externally is the shield that you're showing there, Jay. Those that is the insignia of the clans of the elves in the Celadon forest. Four clans. And there are four of them. Mm -hmm. And again, I... Uh, that makes total I've sense. Got, uh, I've got names for them. If anyone happens to be looking on my website under the uh, geographics section, and there's a thing of power groups. And I... Uh, Basically, I mean, I figured the elves were going to be somewhat organized. Some of them are more interested in being involved with humans, some of them less. Uh, there's uh, a whole variety of things. I mean, the Celadon Forest is a pretty mean place. If you ever were to try and invade the Celadon Forest, I mean, you could take 100,000 men in there and you wouldn't make it out alive because the elves are, you know, that, that's a strong point of elvendom in, in my world. And so these four clans, they basically, it's its more of location than anything, but there's four of them. Anna, read like the website, please. Uh, link it again. Yeah, Hang on a please. Second. Uh, I have, I have, I'm linking straight to the page here. So Are they Sylvan or are they mostly Sylvan, Mike, or are they, are, are they high? They're, they're a mixture of high and gray elves. High and gray, no Sylvan. Okay. There are uh, um, the Grugak that are there. Okay. And I've, I've actually pulled some other sources in. There's a couple other offshoots okay. of those that I've got in there. But it's generally the way it's been described in the books is it's a lot of high and gray elves. And, and but so you've got four of the clans. One of them is very uh, extremely magical, and it's actually run by a group of four or five as opposed to having an individual leader like the other three do, but um, it, it's, it's more of a locational kind of thing. Um, they don't have lines drawn and they don't fight with each other. I mean, they disagree because they all have different views on life and some of them like humans and some of them don't. And mm -hmm. The ones in the North, which is the, which is the ring of the Galadirian, they're the ones that are most involved with humans. And that's where most of the player characters have come out of is from there. Oh, you got a lot of uh, Elvish characters and half elves. We have eight people in the party. Five elves. Or I'm sorry, four elves. Josh is playing a half elf and three humans. No, uh, no half. No stunties. <laughs> no. Um, it's, it happens, man. I mean, almost every uh, the female players I have in my groups are all mostly half elves. <laughs> it just happens, right? It's okay. Yeah. You just Josh, run with it. Uh, Josh Pop wanted to play a cleric magic user. So yeah, I worked for half elves, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a uh, one elf is a specialty priest of Heronius, a glory axe. And Thank twins, you. His twin glory axe. His twin sister is a thief. Um, cool. Anna's a human ranger. Yep. Um, we've got a uh, um, gray elf wild mage. 
All right, so you're playing one two e. Um, that's played by um one of the guys that's on here with us a lot. I can never remember what his Twitch name, name is Twitch because name he goes is... by Raid on. It's uh um. Trust me, I get all names confused all the yeah, time. Yeah, Radon the Mighty. You got is it some... Rocks? Yeah, Rocks and Fire. Oh, it's Rocks. All right, <laughs> nah, I got it. Cool. Rocks, hey, that Rocks makes sense. Yep. Rock. Good. It's good to see you back on and, too, Rocks. Uh, then, um, <coughs> Harry Bullion has gotten in, and he is playing a dual class magic user Maester. Um, I like the idea of using the Maester like you came up with. So I awesome uh, dual or mul multi. He's a multi class. You're multi class. The multi class. Yeah, I, we do it too for the humans. So, so Bill, if Bill's on, Bill, there you go. Someone else is using your maester in the in a campaign setting beyond yeah. beyond ours. So, very cool. It is, the sage always kind of was interesting to me, but it it needed more. And then when it you does. Came up yeah. with that whole thing, and I just kind of took it verbatim the way you described it, and it, it works pretty well. It does. It, and, and and then they can have an adventuring class. You take one of the base yeah. four classes, you yeah. can have an adventuring class, um, and then they can do all the supplemental stuff while still participating in the in the adventure. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Gary playing as Sage makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, ecstatic right. to hear that he's playing. Uh, uh, he's playing that class, Bill. I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic I, to hear that. The last, uh, the last time we played, uh, they found a group of elves wandering in the Amadan Hills, and they were asking them what it was they were doing. And um, they, well, they're, and I just basically, you know, Gary, go ahead, <laughs> let him know. He knows more about the Earthland than I think anybody probably ever would, so I just let him kind of give his uh, take to these elves that they met and everything. But um, I've got another guy who's an actual one of the Knights of Nyron. Um, so uh, we've got a couple all right. So cool. Couple. So it's based just like on a, a Knight of Yulik or a Knight of the High Forest yep. or a Knight of the Holy Shielding, where they're yep. actually a hybrid, specialty priest paladin almost. Yep, that's all right. exactly what he is. And then uh, yeah. the one guy. Uh, who came with me from my old campaign is playing an elven cavalier. Nice, right from the from from the. So uh, yeah. we took that right out of uh, dragon, dragon Max Max. and everything, and uh, yeah, he's uh, running around with this odd, weird orange haircut, and uh, <laughs> right. mm -hmm. kind of stepped outside of elvendom and has decided that he want to help wants to help Nyrond out. So, but very cool. So, so that's pretty much where everything is at this point roger roger moore asked and our specific question is uh, so what edition uh, what do you system and i'm assuming you're using one uh, it's one e two e it sounds like it or is it a yeah, one two three actually, i found and i and i had i wrote down some different things i use osric kind of okay um because you know it's pretty much a d and d organized and I do he, that. He always says that he's using your rules, Jay. Pardon That's okay. I, and I have no problem with that. You know, yeah, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad he things. says that. That's great. That's, yeah. you know. Yeah. A lot of the character classes with that you created and everything. I figured you've been play testing them for 40 years. So they've got <laughs> yeah. some, right? Yeah. That's always the thing. You make up a class and then you realize too late that it's kind of a runaway train. And I've already run into that with the Elven Cavalier, that uh, they've got 90% resistance to... Um, Sleep and charm. Well, but to anything that has to do with a mind-affecting spell. Yeah, you got to be a little careful with that. That doesn't count whole person and stuff, man. That's like right. illusions and like, you know, and like and that's domination and stuff. Yeah. When they were fighting the uh, witch or whatever in the swamp in the last adventure, she cast two different spells on him. And of course, because he's resistant to them, they didn't work. And so the fight didn't go quite the way I wanted it to. So I got to work on t trying to tone that down a bit. Right. But We're going to share this. So. I'm going to toot our own horn that Michael and I are doing. He this is uh, this is the Maester class. Uh, I'm interested to know what 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 disciplines Gary's character has. What level is he? Three three, a little higher. Um, he's fourth fourth. Four four. Okay, so uh, you, you get you, you get your at you get a, you get your skills and then you get an advanced study and academic. It goes back and forth. So is he is he do, is he into healing or or alchemy? Got, um, What's that? Once he's taken, and I kind of. I if you made changes, that's great, too. 
I, I played around with how many of them you get. And that right. Kind of, right okay. now, he's got the cipher. He's got anatomy. Okay. He's got theology. He's mm-hmm. got flora and fauna. Okay. And he's got heraldry, cartography, and creatures of the undead. All right. So he's got a lot of the skills that, uh, you know, so he has knowledge skills. You made him more yeah. sage-like, which is cool. But he has yeah. the anatomy healing or damage? The capability of healing? Um, he does the healing. Okay, that's great. So he's, you know, it's thrown in a little bit. We've actually kind of had a little bit of difficulty keeping uh, clerics. They're the ones that keep coming in and leaving. And I had a guy named Dennis from Pittsburgh who had a uh, cleric of Foltus who had an 18 wisdom and a 6 intelligence. <laughs> and he played him perfectly it was he was just he he would blunder into doing things it was all they could do to keep him from doing stupid stuff and everything and he uh he ended up having to leave to concentrate on uh work because he uh owns his own podiatry um, Uh, as a doctor he just needed to put all of his time towards it because it was growing and so he didn't really have time or he didn't want to show up once every six weeks or whatever so but uh so, yeah, we've had clerics kind of coming in and out, and Gary picked anatomy and took the healing, so at least we've got... You know, and, and the knight's going to get spellcasting now, too. If he's the knight born. does, yeah, and uh, yeah. Josh was a cleric magic user. And yeah. At one point, they had a uh, um, an undead hunter, hunter yeah. character class. Um, Another one of mine. That's awesome. So, I mean, they've, they're kind of weak on being able to turn undead. I don't think they've yet turned anything. <laughs> <laughs> Because they don't have the levels really to do it. Right. And they keep running into these necromancers of Encabulos and everything, and they're throwing undead at them. And so the fights have been kind of interesting. But so. That's awesome. So. Um, so he asked the second question then? Yeah, oh, what, it was what what what, oh, wait, what edition you're yeah, playing, what style. It sounds like a one, um, two, three hybrid, all three yeah. editions. Yeah. I mean, I use the proficiencies that you use, which are kind of like the feats. Right. Um, I use that kind of thing because it always seemed stupid to me when we were playing as kids that, okay, I'm a fighter and I start out with six proficiencies. Why am I going to have six weapons? Oh, I'm I agree. I'm agree. using one or two of them. And what yeah. are the other four? They're going to sit in the backpack kind of thing. And we never really could figure out what to do with it. And that's why everybody liked third edition so much was now you don't have to take weapon proficiencies you can take all these extra other things and make your character that way so i've incorporated that into it um i use first edition for some some of the spells work better in first than in second they do and vice versa some of them work better in second than in first um there's a game called basic fantasy role-playing game which is kind of uh, another old school kind of thing and it had a few um twists on things i got a little bit of castles and crusades in it um you got a quilt yeah Yeah, and that's the way you do it man i take the the stuff that i like from all these old school sources and this uh Uh, the anthony huso um has uh some things that they do with their combat and everything i mean he uses the original stuff you know you, you got all those modifiers for armor and all that kind of stuff and he incorporates all that in there but his description of how to run surprise and how to keep track of what's going on in a combat round and everything really worked for me and he has a couple of rules that they use because they use miniatures when they play i mean as far as stuff like in third edition they had something called bull rush where you could push somebody mm-hmm. And he's got a way of using that. It's called maneuvering a foe, um, which is kind of an opposed, you know, die roll. You know, you roll and the monster rolls and whoever gets higher, you know. So, I mean, in that way, if you're having a fight on a bridge and you can push the monster off the side of the bridge and he falls 300 feet to his death, that's just another cool way to kill a monster kind of thing. So, I mean, I've incorporated that into it. Um the biggest thing out of uh, Castles and Crusades is the illusionist. Um, 
which like, you know, I read that I read that paragraph, and uh, you know, for decades I have tried to figure out. I've never used illusionists. I never tough. Really brought them in. They're tough. I don't like to that balance. Yeah, I don't like the whole. Um, I disbelieve, and all of a sudden the, the illusion's ruined. It yeah, just it's, it's seemed kind of silly. And the way they kind of described illusionists is they almost like scoop magic out of the air and they use it to, you know, almost like clay and turn it into something. And, you know, when they started, when he, when they include a cure light wounds spell for an illusionist, then you know that the direction of illusion is completely different. And so I kind of took that to heart and um, I really love that whole thing about it. Um, and I've spent now over a hundred dollars on castles and crusades stuff because okay. of all the things that they've done. And that was really got, was what got started for me on it. So, uh, um, so it's, yeah, I mean, it's, Hi, Roger. it's, so uh, it's a lot of stuff. Thanks you know? Roger for being here and appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Someone gifted you a sub, but it hasn't gone through for some reason yet. You should be, you should have a sub now tomorrow, next time you're on. So, and, Thanks for watching, Mr. Moore. I mean, Mr. Moore is another one of my heroes. Yeah. My yep. Mm -hmm. and Dragons. I've, Absolutely. I've, uh, Great to I've have him. He's written. Yep. I enjoyed Sunday's show immensely because you, know, you guys just sat and chatted with him for two hours. Yeah. And that was, yep. that's, we, we're going to have Roger on more. <laughs> we're going to have Roger on much Roger more. On. <laughs> that was funny. All right. I want to see how much I've. Into Mike's camp, Michael's campaign. Do you use Lena Kafka's Archer? Yes. Do you use you use the Duelist? We know that already. Yeah. Bandit. Yep. Elven Cavalier. Yes. Yeah. Which Cavalier do you use? Do you use the seventy-two or the or the Unerter Cane or not neither? No, I use the Dragon Magazine. Okay. Yes, that's two. All right. There you go. Um. What else have I given? We know knights. That's great. But you have your own classes too, which is really cool. So let's, yeah. show, let's share some of them. I've uh, I've created three of them. I one got, of them uh, well, let's do this one first. We haven't talked about this. Oh, you made this. Just, um. Is well, it? you've got Niron, then you've got four hundred years of kings, and so I decided I was going to map out how the kings uh, went through. So. Oh my. This is again me beating world building to death with a uh, <laughs> big rock. What I did was, uh, um, for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned, Nyrond and France are the same thing. They're pretty much the same size. They have three major rivers running Looks through the them. Too. They have lots of grassland. They have uh, temperate zones where you can grow things like grapes and uh, yeah, so I kind of modeled it. So what I did was I went on to um, a, a historical into site. the history books, and yeah. I picked out a section of time wow. in France that was about 400 years long, and I saw how many kings there were and how many children did those kings have, and um, and then I just started creating um, the the flow chart, and it kind of goes through the middle. All the ones in yellow are the ones that actually turn out to be the kings. Right. And and start on the upper uh, the upper left. The very first king there is Medvin, and he's been mentioned as the first king. And you go all the way down to the bottom in the right, and you'll find Linward and Seward, his brother, and before him was Archbold, and. I filled in everything in between. and Did you have any War of the Roses type things or anything like that in, in this? Or was it just basically, yeah, this has uh, been pretty stable. It's been pretty stable. It's, well, it's for a long time in there, um, you know, they got ruled by the Great Kingdom to the point where they didn't want to see all of that kind of stuff happening. Right. So you had a bunch of, you know, wealthy landowners who they decided to make Medvin the king. And, and I got a whole story around that, too, um, that uh, they wanted stability that they did not have in the Great Kingdom. So they've kind of pretty much let, you know, the succession work. And you can kind of see how it branches off. There's a couple of places. Yeah. Where 
kings die and then you've got to go to somebody else and then it branches off so i mean they have had some breaks in it where they've had to reestablish the line like right here like right in there yeah yeah let's see. Um, and i cut, tried to put in the names of the wives and different things and tried to th throw a little a bit of flavor in and Eventually, I'd like to have something written about each one of them. I, I would say that would be awesome. I, I, dude, dude, I've never gone to this level of detail in my uh, Yulik yeah. and all. No. I, well, I mean, you want to go into the level of detail. If you look on my website, um, there's a section in the campaign, or not in the campaign, but in the uh, cartography about resources. And I spent one weekend learning about grapes, and I developed <laughs> my own um, uh, grape varieties and everything. That's and awesome. Six growing regions around Nyron where these different grapes come from. And I also did the same thing with beer. Uh, there's a, a bunch of varieties of hops. I think I might have mentioned one of those to you. They imported it from the Altamira area. Area. Yes, near the Kumquat. There is an actual. Uh, there is an actual type of a hop that goes into beer that has um, flavorings of kumquat in it. <laughs> really? So, uh, <laughs> kumquat you know, meat and kumquat beer. I'm reading awesome. about all these, and you know, when you, when you taste <laughs> the beer fantastic. and everything, and you know, if you get into craft beer, like I kind of get into, mm -hmm. got a passion for Greyhawk and craft beer. And nice. so I'm reading about this and it said, Thank and it fair. also has flavorings of kumquat. I'm like, okay, well, that's going in. And yeah, it has to be. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so we got, now I have to take in our game. And I know when we're doing for castles and cachets, yeah. we have to mm -hmm. do that. There's a, there, not only the kumquat themselves, but the hops, there's hops in the area too. We got it. Yeah. So there you go. It's great. Mm -hmm. Great. That's cool. It's just, you know, I mean, I have tried, I've tried to develop out. You know, the whole Brackenmore County, which is where the Nat Marsh is and where all the towns that I've made maps for and everything, I've developed it. So all the towns have got uh, an economy to them. Mm -hmm. um, and I've tried to come up with, you know, odd little things. You know, ev every area is going to have its own thing. And like in Arnford, they found a style of hops that was only grown really locally. And this one person has uh, kind of, cornered the market on it and it kind of gets a bit of a cinnamon flavor to the beer which is a real thing um but they sell this beer and people taste it and it tastes like cinnamon and they say that they've never seen him put cinnamon in the beer so they think it's a magical brew and everything and all he's uh -huh. doing is just using the hops but he doesn't want to let on because he's getting rich oh yeah so that's the quirk in arnford i mean you know i've got hey, fairly I go to, to that kind of level with a lot of this. No, stuff. that's great, it's, man. I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. and all we call that flavor fireball. <laughs> yeah. Do you have yeah. a stout? Do you have a Guinness stout version? That's what Big Mac wants to know. Um, Porter's. Actually, oh, I'm trying why. to think. There was one that I just actually created in uh, the oatmeal uh, stout. One that I got a that I have to uh, kind of keep hidden because as to where it is and everything because the players haven't gotten there. Yet. Oh, okay. There you go. But there is there is one in another section of the. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's just something to kind of work on with that. But I mean, I, I've gone. I took. Uh, I mean, the whole thing really kind of got started right at the beginning of COVID. COVID. Really couldn't go anywhere, and so I started going through um, all of the stuff on the in the Marklands about Nyron, and just started taking my own notes and yeah, and then extrapolating. Ended up with like fourteen pages of ideas. Here comes a read in. It's the legendary Swede himself, Skagath. Hello. Not a single pep uh, peep about monks tonight, so you're you're safe. No, we haven't talked about. Yeah, exactly. No monks. Yes, yep. I'm assuming there, there are no monks, monks, and I will say there are monks, but they but haven't. I haven't there aren't any player character monks. Yeah, no, I don't have any player character monks, but there is a. Uh, if you read in uh, Bastions of Faith, they actually talk about a, a handful of yeah monas monastic. Yep. Uh, adherence to Heronius, and so there actually is a monastery in the Nat Marsh, but I haven't done anything. With so it. you put your bastion of faith in the Nat, in the Nat Marsh? No, okay. um, there's one of the uh, monastic orders. Oh, one of the monastic orders. Okay, cool. So. Nice, very cool. Yeah, Saint Barnabas Wit, which is one of my favorite uh, beers of all time, is made was uh, I forget what this uh, uh, um, that and uh, Chimay. There's yeah. category of beer made by monks i forget what it's called mm -hmm. 
Well, yep. it's the Belgian Trappist monks are the ones that make it in Belgium. There's, yep. there's only six licensed Trappist monks uh, organizations that are allowed to make the beer and put that insignia on the label. So, so, yeah, those are the only two that I know of that I've had before were those two. Well, there's a, I've had several of them. And I, it's, I like European beers probably more than just about anything. So Very cool. Them. You're talking about stuff I've had. So. An, addict, an alcoholic drink of the, uh, drinks of the Flannis map. Well, you know, we're getting to the point where we can do a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff. That's a yeah. uh, tradition of Greyhawk. Before the classes, have. here's an edited Realm Ward map. I think you just did this so you mm. could, you have. You yeah, have, that was, uh, again, um, that was the Realm Ward map that they used for Living Greyhawk. And so I got my uh, uh, trusty free version of Photoshop out and, uh, Moved some stick, moved some things around, and redrew some lines. And then uh, I spent uh, a pretty good amount of time developing Realm Ward. Um, there's actually a tab for Realm Ward. I did all the guilds, of which there's got to be twenty some odd of them at least. Um, all different, you know. And I kind of I used a lot of, uh, and that's the other thing that I've used in in kind of world building. Um, a lot of people have heard of the Harn yeah. products from Columbia Games, mm-hmm. which is about as real world stuff as you can possibly get into. Um, and I I really like how they have it set up and and s- kind of simply describing you know how countries are run, so you don't have to get into you know page upon page and one page, but. So I used a lot of that, and I used how they put some guilds together. I used the City of Greyhawk guilds for some ideas. And then um, another one of my heroes, uh, Giant Stomp. Will, yep. Will, Will Dvorak. I know he's um, lurking now. Yep. His stuff with Rook Roost that he did, uh, that helped me. And actually, I've used his Bone March companion for a lot of stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's those, it's- uh, it's made to be used, and that's I think yeah. that uh, people yeah. would be honored that you're utilizing it. Yeah. And so, when I, I did my uh, the second um, Greyhawk Con module that I ran last year and last October, um, I ran using the Bone March campaign, and that's where I met um, Gary. No, um, until I'm getting old, I can so see people's all, faces, but I can't we're remember all getting names. Old, man. Um, Alan yeah. Boy. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. He signed mm-hmm. up and played, mm-hmm. and you know, I've since gotten to know uh, Alan a little bit. Did uh, you chat he, with him at GaryCon at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've chat with him several times Good. at GaryCon. Yeah. But he had asked me for a copy of it because he enjoyed it, and I gave nice. him all the maps, and I rewrote it and gave it to him and everything. And it was all based on uh, everything going on in the Flinty Hills and up into the Rakers, and that was all stuff that uh, – um, Came out of Will Devorex Bone March Companions. So, um, but so let's. Um, did they come to this tomb yet? This is the Earthland tomb. Is this the thing you were talking about with the? That's yes. Oh, yeah. That is that's the stone and the archway, and okay. they have been putting these pieces into the stone that's on the left. Okay. And as they do that, then the, the, it just lights up with with hieroglyphs okay. and different things and. I'm getting a city on the edge of forever vibe from Star Trek. Yeah. Mm, I know what <laughs> I know what's gonna happen. They don't know what's gonna happen. Yep. It's yeah, gonna I might do. Uh it's some some earth land's gonna some Azalean or character is gonna step through a bunch of uh, uh from the past right, or something. It's, it's, it's it's I got a twist on it. Oh, that's it cool. Happens, that's cool. Really yeah. cool. <laughs> now I have actually the city on the edge of forever kind of stuff. If you've ever been through the uh, return to the tomb of horrors, yeah, there is a section of that where it goes to a city um, that's kind of lost to time. It's right. called Moyle, and I use that in my. Uh, um, my other campaign with the giants, I ended up getting them there and they wandered around in that town for a while. And that, that was driving them nuts because they had no idea what was going on. And it's kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere. And I, I loved that box set, that cool. whole module from start to finish. I, I just loved it. And I've always wanted to, so I threw some of that in on that campaign. 
All right, let's look at your three classes here. We'll start with the scout, which I'm assuming is based on the scout article or the scout that Tim did a little bit, or is it separate? It's a combination of various things. Okay. I made it, I wanted to make it more of a, a thief that doesn't steal stuff. Yeah. Is, is kind of how I did it. And I kind of like the idea that the barbarian in first edition could, uh, the trap that he was behind stuff. them, and if yeah, they tried yeah. to backstab them, they could kind of intercept it. So I threw that in. So, I mean, it's got a little bit of ranger and a little bit of barbarian in it, and uh, they can they don't set traps because they don't right. you know they don't get to that technical of a thing. They're out trying to find stuff, and so then I just kind of uh, knitted it together. I see um, here they gain an addition ten feet to their movement rate. Do you is movement rates important in your game like it is in mine, or is it? Yeah, they are. And I'm going to try, I'm working to try and incorporate incorporate that more into my combat um, instead of just rolling the dice and, okay, if one side goes, then the other side goes. I do kind of like the idea of being able to move and fight in the same round. And that comes from Anthony Huso again from the Blue Bard. Um, if a round is a minute long, why is it you can only move or only fight? Why can't you do both? Right. And so his idea around it was for every three inches of movement you've got, you can move five foot in a segment. And then if you've got a round being 10 segments, then you can figure out how much you can move in the round and then still fight. And so, but I haven't incorporated that into the combat yet. I'm still trying to get it so that the players don't have to do all of the hard work. I want to get it onto a spreadsheet, but so, I mean, this was just, it was something that I kind of felt was needed. Um, I like the spy aspect of assassins. Right, without the assassination and the evilness of it. But I, that's I, I got still, it. you know, a scout is someone who's going to work with the military or they're going to be working out, you know, in the wild. I, I kind of see a spy as someone who tries to get into the court, you know, spy on the king, spy on the dukes, all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. and the scout kind of. Uh, takes it into a different direction and i've i've had them fight a scout um and it 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 works i mean the last person that joined up she i gave her the choice of either the scout or the thief but she decided she wanted to be able to steal some stuff so that's all right so she took the thief very cool all right so that's the first one that's great second one is uh the bolt slinger that's right out Bolt of Bolt Slinger. That's right out of third edition. Yep. Um, there is a way that you can turn a gunslinger in third edition uh, if you don't want guns, but you still want to use the class. Crossbow special. You just change everything that says gun to crossbow for the most part. And I spent a pretty good amount of time developing that for third edition because I had a guy who wanted to play one. We were in Greyhawk, and I told him there's no gunpowder. He's like, well, what do I do then? Uh -huh. he mentions that you can do this with crossbows, so I spent a, an evening, and I put it together for him for crossbows. And it takes some of the archer stuff with the point-blank range yeah. and all that kind of thing and incorporates that into it. But that's also in the third edition where you've got point-blank range and that. And so it just, as I describe it, they're kind of a, you know, they like to get, mixed up in combat um and while instead of swinging an axe or a two-handed sword while they're running around shooting crossbows at everybody they can fire two shots around at first level that's pretty nuts and, yeah uh, Hulk the slayer and then i use of course yeah. I mean, you i like the idea you had of kicking up the damage a light crossbow does a die eight and a heavy does a die ten yep because those things literally in history a crossbow is was pretty damn powerful so i mean I, but they don't have a lot of armor they can use and uh, that kind of thing so but they they've got some abilities that, it kind of works along the, line, the lines of a specialty priest where i kind of like this that they can duel only to merlin's specialty priest that's pretty neat yeah. and their diet and you didn't give them full die 10 as a fighter you gave them a die 8 so like an yeah. archer yeah yeah so that's cool. Um, Why fifteen? I, uh, Why I had him fight one of those too, and uh, he got off a few shots and got some hits and everything. And he, like I said, they don't have a lot of armor, but if they keep moving and 
they've got as many shots as they do, then uh, they can survive in a combat. So, one sec here, I kicked out a cord on. Uh oh, <laughs> you're still plugged in though. Yeah. I just looked. Gee, it's twenty five after eight. I thought I wasn't going to have enough to talk about. You're only halfway through uh -huh. it. We're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess I have done all. I I know that that we would have for five episodes if need be. Yeah. I also kicked it out. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to figure out why I lost one of my I lost uh, power on one of my uh, things, and it's about to go out, mm -hmm. and I have no idea why. Looks like everything's plugged in. Okay, I'll, good. I'll figure it out. Okay, good. Yeah, well, not <laughs> we'll good. It. Not good. It's not It's not something with the stream. It's not something okay, with the stream. Okay, that, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah that is. I don't think so. You're still here. I'm still good. here. I'm still here. Yep. Like Papillon. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, why 15 wisdom? Because of the dual class capability into Merlin? Yeah. Okay. That, and just, there's, there's some... You know, just to kind of give it some restriction, I guess. And there, there was a uh, in the in for gunslingers in third edition. I think wisdom was kind of important to it too. Okay. So that's what I was modeling after. And you still keep half forks in. You're not eliminating them like a lot of other people are. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. Good to hear. And I don't have <clears throat> haven't found anybody brave enough to play one yet. Oh okay. Uh, and then the last one, the urge. Is that right? It, <coughs> I'm not sure. I read it. It was from a very long time ago. Um, me. The third <coughs> was the way it was described was for someone who did magic for magic's sake. And they could use any kind of magic that they could figure out how to learn. Okay. So they can cast and they can get into any class as magic and um they you know like if they have four first level spells they could have two magic missiles and two cure light wounds um it's just a matter of how they go about getting the spells and everything there is a little bit of a tie to the religion in that they've got to donate money uh to temples but they do it anonymously okay uh, god knows it's happening right <laughs> Whether the priests that are running the temple mm -hmm. know, they're just like, hey, cool, we got yeah. money, but you know, so, God yeah. actually knows that it's going on. So that kind of establishes a little bit of the, uh, um, you know, because I kind of look at the gods as being able to, you know, give their power out as they deem fit to the priests that are worshiping them. And, um, you know, with the specialty priests, I kind of do things the same way you do. Um, they don't have as much in the way of spells, but they get all the extra abilities that a regular cleric doesn't get and all that kind of thing. And so a third is just another way of so they could... solving the problem of being a human who wants to be a split magic user cleric. Could they you be uh, magic user druid, or could they be illusionist yeah, druid? They can, they can get druidic spells yeah, if they figure out, and they they uh, would have to be they would have to work with a druid to to try and learn the spells. So, but you know that's kind of um, you know going on in the background kind of thing. And the way I've, especially in Nyron with the uh, college, the university in Realmord. And there's the College of Wizardry that's tied to it. Uh, you've got a whole lot of people in Realmord that know a whole lot of different kinds of magic. So these things become a little bit easier to to uh, uh, come into being, as it were. And actually, I asked uh, Mike to make up a uh, Baklunish wizard uh, about a oh. year ago. Oh. I just kind of threw it out there, and you made up a, a an interesting... Uh, character and you said to, well, he wasn't able to get into the wizards guilds and all that kind of stuff well in the wizards college of wizardry there's actually a secondary wizards guild which is all the real high powered ones and because of the powers you gave him to kind of innately identify magic items and they let him into the fraternity so he's uh he's one of the 10 or 15 of them that are in this that people don't really know much about um, but nice. uh there's a uh, 
kind of a little used hallway down one wing of one of the uh, buildings in the College of Magic. And uh, if you are told to go down that hallway, they usually point you at the door and then walk the other way. And on the other side of that door are the professors of wild magic. And that's where uh, nice. Arius's character was uh, given. Uh, Any work. surges happen in the game? Oh, yeah. We only had one that caused a lot of problems. He, uh, <laughs> I love he set something off and it actually cast a confusion spell within like a 20 foot radius. Oh, I love it. Anna's ranger was confused and she wandered off somewhere. One of the other I'm usually confused, but bad die rolls con <laughs> consistently. Yep. And so they, they really only had one bad accident. Um, he had one where he He's like five and a half or six feet tall, and it shrunk him to half his height. That's awesome. And, um, he's, he's had three or four of them. But I I played around with that class, too. Um, if you In the second edition, there's a chart that you roll on every time you cast a spell, and certain numbers mean you hit a wild surge. And it was only one out of 20 chance. Well, I made it two out of 20 chance. Mm -hmm. So the surges oh, yeah. are going to be more prevalent, and uh, I just wanted to make it even more wild than they made it wild, so that it. Would yeah, one in twenty is not wild enough. I yeah. was thinking of changing it to like one somehow, but one in ten I think is too much, you know. But uh, but that's a tough call. Uh, uh, so. and, uh, <laughs> um, Bill has managed to make his way up to fifth level, and I've only had surges happen like maybe four or five times. So yeah. he's been kind of lucky in the die rolls, but I think the odds are coming back on him. But yeah, I've played around with uh, a little bit of that and everything. Like I said, I've tried to make some changes to some things just to make it more interesting in some cases, hey, just to see how it would work. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, if it doesn't work, then I don't let anybody play it from going forward. So. Well, yeah, that's it. And I've said this all along that, uh, especially if we're playing in 1E, 2E, or whatever edition you're playing in, if you're adding stuff in, it's a constant play test. You mm -hmm. may, you, you may be like, this is too powerful. I need to tweak this back. I may need to do this or that. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's what, that's what happens, definitely. <laughs> Curtis asked that, Anna, have you, are you firing your doctrine in this game too and firing into melee combat all the time? Uh, oh, only yeah. died once, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anna's Anna's got a problem because I use your critical and fumble charts. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's it's bad. We, I fumble. Uh, oh God. We I had fumbled. a fight just recently, and uh, one round Anna rolled a fumble and sprained an ankle, and then like yep. four rounds later, she rolled another fumble and she sprained the other ankle. <laughs> oh yeah, I was awesome. I was fumble fumble. It, it's yeah, it's, it's bad. I, I, my character rolls real. I roll really bad, so it, it happens. Kind of it's part, part it's, of the fun it's of the funny. Game. Yep, yep, it is. Um, and of it's course, funny. the way it works, the last game Anna had to leave early to go onto another Zoom. Oh, and then yeah, my character and did so many cool deeds. I, I have yeah, right no, after that yeah. happened. They got jumped by five wyverns. Whoa. And they're flying in on them, and Anna gets the bow out and takes a shot. And I rolled a critical, and the critical result was uh, it hits the chest cavity and it dies in three to eight rounds. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's she leaves. I roll the 20, and she takes out a wyvern with one shot. That's it. Yep. Mm hmm. <laughs> Um, earlier there were they were fighting some swamp trolls that were hidden in some trees and she just took a shot and uh, hit one right in the head and killed it with one shot and so i'm thinking maybe i need to box up some of my dice and send them to her <laughs> i think i don't think it's a dice the problem is my <laughs> hand ringing or something <laughs> like in lots who yeah yeah Okay, so uh, what questions do you have? Look at that. My, uh, we're at 933, and you've been talking most of the time. Perfect. I told you this would go through uh, pretty quick, uh, yeah. and you had plenty of time to fill. This is great. There's uh, there's people in the world that will tell me I can't shut up. So. Oh, it's great. It's a great discussion. <laughs> um, I have also uh, – wait a minute. I have another folder. I have a second folder here. VGC modules. Oh, those are, oh, the those are the virtual ground con ones you ran, right? Which yeah. one? I have Swallowfield and the Sewers. Which one was first? The first one was um, with Swallowfield. Um, okay. That module I created, um, and it's one of the ideas that I had come up with when I was coming up with all this. Um, 
trying to reestablish um, instead of the Iron League for a time, there was something called the Golden League, okay, which was all the Iron League countries and Nyron. And oh, nice. Nyron wants to uh, reestablish their alliances with those. And so Linward sent a group of adventurers to Anwal to the city of Scant, which is the only Scarlet Brotherhood outpost left in Anwal with the intention of kidnapping the leader. And okay. so they went through all of that and they come to find out that the leader is not the Scarlet Brotherhood woman. No, she's um, chained to the wall. Um, there's a woman who was a uh, um, an apprentice to, and this is another one I never remember the name, I wrote it down, uh, Graf Radich. Raidrich, who is kind of the one who's um, second in command of Alyssa. Mm -hmm. And I kind of figured, well, since Zavener is trying to take over all of that, and he basically kicked uh, Raidich out, um, Raidich figured out that, you know, he's basically been a puppet and got his uh, senses back together again and he decided well what's the next best thing I'll just start conquering my own country so he sent this um, apprentice down and uh, she's been port uh, portraying the Scarlet Brotherhood person for like a year so they end up having to kill her and they kidnap <laughs> the Scarlet Brotherhood person and Something then Onwall be becomes Onwall again Excellent. And uh, those maps, I think those were the hand, some of the hand drawn maps that I had done. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's because that was before uh, that was before I had incarnate. Right. This is nicely in, in, hand drawn now. <coughs> so I did that, and then the other one was uh, the other one that I mentioned that I just ran last October that uh, Alan Groey played in, which was up in the Rakers. And I used a lot of, uh, I made battle maps with uh, Incarnate for all of that. And I ended up uh, um, basically establishing a connection to the Underdark. On ah, whole, yeah, that's, that's Swallowfell, which is a small town. It's it's on Anna's map in, uh, mm -hmm. in Anwal. It's on the northern edge. Um, I think they land, you know, they're, they're taken there by boat, and uh, then they end up uh, in Swallowfell, which is where they find the contact that they need. Um, so, yeah, I had to hand draw that so that I had something to work off of. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, it's still nice, nicely done. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll yeah. run something really cool this year, too. Uh, let's see, here's Fractured yeah, Hill. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's the entrance into the un, into the underground and the rakers. Essentially, what I did was the dwarves of Dumadan, mm -hmm. which are all out in the west. Um, they found a way through the underdark over to the rakers, and oh, they wow. had enough to know that you know Will Dvorak wrote up uh, some stuff about a couple of different clans that used to be one, and then they split apart, and they've been moved fighting each other for like 400 years and one of them has decided that they want this to stop and but they don't know about the dwarves from Dumadan. so there's a whole political thing going on with that that uh um oh, i love Dumadan. kind of got developed mm -hmm. but i wanted to establish some kind of uh, an underdark up into the nyrond area and into the north because all the underdark that um Everybody's done, you know, right. It's tree alt and all that kind of stuff. That's all down in the south and everything, and it doesn't really bleed up into the north. So I figured it probably would. And I've kind of put some bits and pieces of stuff together for a couple more drow cities that are along the lines of, uh, you know, Mentor. Arrow Life Sinlu and that kind of thing. No men's so, Yeah, just kidding. But I've got, yeah, the one that I'm going to get doing this october is gonna take place uh, somewhat through the underdark as well so nice um like i said trying to establish that and so but like i said all i did was you know you couldn't go anywhere for covid so i sat with my mark lands book and my computer and just started writing notes and 
14 pages later, I had more stuff than I'll probably ever be able to get to. But then uh, I knew I wanted to develop the country and everything. So that's why I've started the website. And you know, I've gone into great detail about the Thieves Guild and how that all got developed and you know, a lot of the resources. And um, and I've still, you know, I've got all kinds of things that I still haven't even started to write yet for it. So I got by a little to keep me busy, at least till the end of the year anyway. So that's all. Yeah, that's a lot, man. It's a lot of stuff, and it's it's impressive. Um, yep. Couple questions. <clears throat> Rox asks uh, something about uh, when uh, uh, when will we go into the cell down and find my sword? <laughs> 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 you don't have to answer that. That actually, that was one of the wild surges. Um, oh. He had a vision of the star hunt. And lying on the floor somewhere in the star hunt is a sword. That a mage can use. And he has no idea what it is, but it was like, it was one of those things where like, you see it on like a TV show or whatever, where they actually like step into the scene and everything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the scenery changes back. I mean, it was that vivid for cool. him to see it. Nice. So he's, yeah, he's. Got this uh, long-term campaign oh. plot line there, Roxy. You yeah. have to wait. Yeah, he's Star Hunt is someplace that you're not really supposed to go near. Um, it's really bad. <laughs> so they're going to have to be a lot higher level than fourth and fifth level to go to the Star Hunt. But it's there, and you know, I've got it in the back of my mind. I've already got the sword developed, so... Secondly, uh, Mac asked uh, if you used any of the original three adventures with Greyhawk, and a lot of them were uh, skipping Williams and his wife wrote. You know, which ones I'm talking. There's a whole bunch of them. They're still on the list there that, that uh, Mac listed. I've used a bunch of them in my game there, Mac. Um, a lot of these I use. Haskins Manor. I know I wrote, ran that. Uh, I, um, the Eye of the Sun. Base of operations, I used multiple times. I actually led by Ed Stark. So, yeah, I've used a ton of those. Yep. No, just... actually, I just found a link back to all that kind of stuff. So, I probably would have stumbled upon this eventually, but I don't even remember. I mean, I used to go to the site every day and look at stuff, and I don't ever remember any of these. So, I may have, I may have seen them as they, some of them came out, but yeah, yeah, that's more stuff. I noticed there's something in there from Owen, Casey Stevens, and mm -hmm. Monty Cook, Sean Reynolds, so there's got to be some good stuff in there, because I... I'm working on the magic that the Earthland actually used, and there's some stuff in Monty Cook's, uh, those books of eldritch wizardry and everything that he did, um, that kind of took third edition magic in a whole different direction in some cases and everything. There, there's some pretty cool stuff in there that I'm uh, trying to work in so that I can make the earth land really be something completely separate magic wise. I did write in, uh, in the blog section of my, uh, of my website, I did write a few paragraphs about a kingdom called Nuria, which mm -hmm. that was, um, That was off of one of the other sites that I know uh, they were talk. Somebody was talking about it when they were going into the Earthland, and there's so many sites now you, you kind of lose yeah. as to which one wrote it or whatever. But he he just mentioned Nuria in passing, so I'm like, all right, well I'm going to steal that one. I'm going to write <laughs> it, and so I put it. You know, I used Mike's map. You you done like a hand drawn map that had some of the old Earthland and elves and all that. I don't think I had Nuri on there. But you didn't have Nuri no. on, so I oh, put thank it. You, thank you. I put it along the Relmore Bay. Mm -hmm. And nice. if you look at the at Anna's map as you go towards the south, um, there's some uh, kind of torn up long islands and everything along the bay there. Yep. Um, well, that's where Nuria was before the Earthland got too much involved. I mean, it always seemed like to me they were working on trying to control nature uh, from the way they described like how Vecna worked and different things. And so nobody really talked about trying to control the oceans and what is more powerful than waves on an ocean. So yeah. they tried to control that. 
and they stole elven magic from some sea elves and then they started messing with stuff to the point where they created like essentially like a category 12 hurricane and that's what wiped it all out um because they didn't know what they were doing with it and they thought they could control it and so i wrote a little bit of an article about that and just kind of throw it yeah. in because there's some stuff that they talk about up and down the coast in plan uh, or their own worst enemy mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's a section up north of uh, Rel Astra, um, you know, those islands and everything that have catacombs underneath. And um, and it kind of sounded like, I mean, if they did it in one place, why wouldn't they do it in another? So I kind of incorporated a little bit of that in. So I mean, I've been, I've always kind of liked the idea of the Earthland and not so much Vecna because Vecna has been beaten to death, but um, yeah, tell there me, had tell to be me. more than just him. So, yeah, uh, a question for um, for you from Uchimata, and that is uh, naming. Uh, how do you uh, go about naming your places, groups, people, etc.? Uh, French twist to it. A little yeah, bit, right? um, I I've used a variety of sources. Um, Probably the one I seem to fall back on the most is uh, there's a website, fantasynamegenerators.com. Yeah, it's great. I use that and for I use that for elves and dwarves and all sorts of yeah. It's it got the blue background. It's got thousands of different subcategories. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to link that in chat, the fantasy name generator. It's really good. I fall back on that. Gary Gygax wrote the book of names which unfortunately I'm never going to be able to have a real copy of because I saw one for sale for about $400. Um, but so, I was able to buy the PDF, and so I refer to that. There's also uh, the Judges Guild I one, think too. it's this one. Um, yep. Oh, yeah. Judges Guild. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Judges I Guild. used yep, the Judges it. Guild one for a long time. That's it, the fancy name generator. It's really good. Yep. Yep. Really a good one. Yep. Great questions. Um so, Michael, what did you say in closing here, man? See, I told you we'd get through this no problem. <laughs> Two mean, hours passes by I pretty think, quick. Like I said, uh, somebody threw down the gauntlet. And I, I was digging through some stuff a couple of years, you know, once the COVID started and everything, and I started, you know, what am I going to do? And that's when I hit upon it. But as I was going through boxes, I was finding these uh, hardbound books with blank pages in them that I had bought in the past. My intention was that I was going to start writing my campaign stuff in them. Oh, wow. And I have still got like four of these books and none of them have a word put in them. And uh -oh, uh, so now you can. So I've never gotten around to doing what I've wanted to do with this. And when Ed Greenwood made the comment that, you know, we're not getting any younger here. And, you know, he made the comment himself the last time he was on, you know, I, I got so much stuff that I got to write. And, he's, you know, where am I going to find the time to do it? And, he's dead on, man. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, well, I, I'm just going to start doing that. So, you know, I, I don't watch a whole lot of TV anymore. The stuff I watch is you guys on Wednesdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. I play my games on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And when I'm not doing that, then I'm writing stuff. Uh, so there's TV shows. And I bought a copy of Dune when it came out. And I still haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't ever get around to sitting down and watching TV for three or four hours and wasting my time. If I want to waste my time, I'd rather be writing. It's good. I'm actually... Uh, I like I said, I gave a copy of my module to Alan because Alan has published a ton of stuff. Yes, and I just has. asked him if he'd read it and tell me if this is something because I mean, you guys put all that stuff together for Len, and I'm actually helping Dan Boggs. Oh, great stuff! He's got some things that Len was doing, and I've been working with him. He wrote up a bunch of stuff. And I mean, his his uh, and, his book is great. Yeah. He gave me a copy of that. Yeah, yeah and so. Uh, I think I'm starting to figure out how to write a little bit better than I used to when I was younger. And, um, and I just, I'm finding that, I don't know, if nothing else, it's a good uh, uh, scrub brush for the brain. Um, it, yeah. Uh, you know, 
something to uh, take your mind off of everything else and to just immerse yourself into it and uh, try to keep the mind sharp uh, and stuff. So, I mean, I I can't recommend it highly enough. If you've got something you want to write down. um, You know, and then I've, you know, I've been fortunate, very fortunate enough to meet you three and a handful of other people that um, have always impressed me. Um, and now I can uh, join you join the by club. And, yep. walk by him at Gary Con and stop and have a 15 minute conversation like I did with Mike and you know, hang out yeah. with him. Sat down and had and dinner and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had so had much had fun. Did lunch once and you know, mm-hmm. I got to know I got to know Carlos because I played one of his modules at uh, um, um, Game Hall. And he just happened to ask where I was from. And he said, I'm from Chicago. And he said, well, I grew up around Chicago. And then we got to talking about Blackhawks. And then uh, we played through his module and everything. And uh, Small world, isn't it? Just kind of hit upon and everything. Then I come to find out where does he live now? Well, he lives literally 15 minutes away from my relatives or my in-laws in Cleveland. Yeah. So I've gone out there and hung out a couple of times. uh, you know, outside of all of this and everything. So I've gotten to know him really well. And actually, uh, he's had some contributions to my campaign. I asked him some stuff and he threw out a couple ideas and I kind of tore them apart and blew them up. And But they got germinated by him. So like I said, I've gotten to know a, a lot of really, really great people. And I'm, I'm really, you know, if it weren't for a few die rolls, then I didn't win the... Uh, the joust. I don't know where you and I would have been, Jay. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, by the way, I'm working on a special. It, for we have you, Mike Disney, and and uh, and Bones all have champions now, and I, and I'm gonna I'm working a little special champion grudge match return for the next joust. In, in addition to the, all the others who are still trying to win. So, well, as long as we're not doing hand to hand, because I no, 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 it'll be all jousting. I went down on that pretty quickly. Yeah, right? it'll all be jousting. Part we're doing the joust again. It was so popular last couple of years. We got to continue the joust during Virtual Grog Con. Yep. So, the Black Knight, yeah, still vows to avenge himself. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, but remember, that actually, uh, that's where I met Gary because yeah. I ended up being, I ended up having to fight him in the uh, when I went up to win and. I had told him, you know, man, you know, here's a guy that I've been reading since, you know, basically the invention of the internet. I mean, I remember getting AOL at work and I tootled around at lunch one day and I just said, oh, well, the type chat. in a word and see what happens. So, of course, I typed in the word Greyhawk. <laughs> oh, we all did, but if we got the internet the first time. <laughs> wow. There it was on the, uh, the yep. AOL chat room. I mean, I've got, I, fo- I downloaded and printed the copy of the house on Summoner's Row that Roger Moore wrote. Um, and he was doing it, you know, every so often for a few days in there, and he put the whole module out that way first. And I printed it off. I mean, and, you know, hell, it was Roger Moore, so it's got to be great to start, right? And mm-hmm. then it turns out that it's like just this fantastic place in the city of Greyhawk. And um, and Gary was writing all kinds of stuff in there all the time, you know, as Pluffett Smedger. I didn't know his name was Gary or anything. I knew it was Pluffett Smedger. Yeah. And, I mean, I've got, I was, like I said, I was digging through stuff here the other night looking for things that I might want to show you. And I was finding all these photocopies of pages that I'd printed. Because back then you didn't have any no PDFs. Or stuff and everything. Yeah. Because you, you didn't know if it was going to go away or not. Absolutely. So got thousands of printed photocopies of stuff. Mm. And all of them, a lot of them have got Gary's name all over them and everything. So. Yeah, you know how many how many Dragon magazines or Dungeon magazines did you photocopy back then? Because uh-huh. you just there weren't any PDFs available, so you had to. So yeah, dot matrix printer definitely choo, 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 back and forth took forever. Yeah. Oh. So so wow, great discussion here. That was awesome, man. And uh, thank you. Michael will be able to, uh, you know, if you have any other questions for him, you know, Vamoku on Discord, if you have anything, you know, this community is great with, you know, like I said, I don't mind it. Mike uses stuff in his campaign and he's taking stuff from Carlos and who else? That's the great thing about the community. That's, yes, that's you know, awesome. Uh, that's the yeah. wonderful thing about the community is that everyone's here is 
sharing what, what they're doing and uh, and just making everyone's uh, sessions more enjoyable. And that's that's what it's all about. So, but I will say, I know you inquired about the bounty hunter. It will be a Castles and Crusades class, I promise. So <laughs> that is coming. And I've, yeah, I actually played around with the bounty hunter too. I mean, I know you've got one. Mm -hmm. But I kind of took the articles from the dragon and I pieced some stuff together and I added some stuff in and uh, I've kind of made the bounty hunter a little bit of my own as well. And there's some other things that I've been working on that you know, if somebody wants to play the class, I'll keep working mm -hmm. on it because I haven't done anything with elementalists. And uh, I, I was also it. trying to work on a warlock. But nobody's wanted to play one. Yeah. So, How, so uh, the way uh, the wish you're using the uh, Tim Brannon's witch. Are you mm -hmm. uh, got your yeah yeah yes that whole PDF that he yeah wrote, uh, from word for, one the, the last word in it I every word in it I have uh, it's awesome I'm using that yeah it's fantastic that's I got to get him on I got to get him on yeah. so yeah, it'd be interesting to pick his brain about yeah stuff. So, yeah definitely he's just he's a uh, um, we definitely wouldn't. I can't have Tim and him in the same room together because uh -oh. Anna's here and Tim is l this far left of Anna. So uh, yeah. So uh, uh, you you can do it while I'm in Sweden. So no, no, good. you're fine. I just like oh, okay. Tim is so far. Timmy Brown is so uh, is out there uh, on that spectrum, but that's okay. I just you know I'm just I'm just making a joke here. It's fun. No, like it, 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 there's chat. some and, truth to it. So to I don't. Both of us. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure uh, if he's even in chat. It's okay there, uh, Casey. Um, uh, but uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, got all the questions through, and uh, so um, uh, Mike, uh, uh, let's do some shout outs here. What do you got going on? Um, going to Arizona next week, okay? Nice, awesome <laughs> vacation. vacation for the year, so nice. And um, your games are normally Thursday night, not streamed, you just play, right? yeah, yeah. We just play, we play it through Discord, and I use Owlbear Rodeo for maps. Good. Mm. You all should be lurking on my game while you're playing. Oh, I am. Awesome. I lurking, keep, lurking's I fine. In the background whenever you're running. That's good. I appreciate it. Play and lurk. So mm -hmm. Michael holds an iron standard high with a few diehards like Arthur. And, yeah. Uh, so uh, Gary, that was one of the great things about the discussion that you came in late. But man, we saw a lot of detail. Oh, what another thing? Do you use Wampum that uh, Alyssa made up um, yet, or because um, it's an iron? Um, yeah. The map. And actually, uh, when she and Anna were doing stuff to make the maps, she threw out there, if somebody knows a lot about Wampham, if you want to mm -hmm. send me some stuff or whatever. So I wrote a couple of pages on that. I don't know if she used it or not. But... Oh, I think she used it. Yeah, I'm I sent it to her. So I'm, I'm sure there she used it. There might be some of, the, some of my uh, verbiage out there in the world if that ever gets mm -hmm. published. So There you go. And there's there's Anna, there's Alyssa's Wampham. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Everyone, Alyssa, we'll, uh, we'll see Alyssa on Saturday, and I'll talk about that in a second here. Well, good to hear that you got you got some time off. That's that's fantastic. Uh, and thank you for coming on. What a great discussion. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. It was awesome. Thank you. Greg, thank you Mike, so what's going well, on with you? Uh, oh, nothing new. Uh, hey, it was great having you on here, Mike. Uh, it's always good seeing you in person, of course. Uh, I'm but Let's see, Young Greyhawkery. Yeah, yeah, I got uh, a new uh, Sea Princess novel I've posted up. Uh, more on more of that stuff. So expect to see more Sea Princess stuff out of me. Um, Ooh, otherwise, just doing my weekly games, of which I'm running none of them. So Commodore Adolphus Grafin, Sea Princess Nobles. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, been poking around with those a little more lately so it's expansion on my uh unconquered sea princes article from work journal is what those are <clears throat> anyhow uh that's about all i got okay what's up anna uh, I'm, I'm finishing up the um the map for blue box there for its greyhawk awakening um that is the big project at the moment, but hopefully in a couple of a day or two, I can wrap it up 
yeah, hopefully, yeah, at least this week I can wrap it up and then I'll I'll dig into to other stuff that I have to 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 do, so to speak. There is a there's there's a long laundry list, so so but I'll I'll go into that on, on Sunday or next week when, when it's closer, so to speak. So the, right now there's a little bit of a lull for my patrons, but there's way more on, on the Shield and stuff. There's more heraldry, there is more Furiundi stuff coming and and a bunch of stuff for that way that I'm going with my for my campaign, and there will be an Earth update not too long, and a rules update not too long in distant future either. So, so, so that's yeah, that's what we're going, and then in Mike's game tomorrow, awesome. I'm around again. Yeah, and I'm assuming you're off next week, so get one in this week. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And a lot of people, like Anna's going to be gone almost the whole month of June. I'm going to be gone mm -hmm. a week of June. John at Blue Box is going to be gone two weeks in June. So, and uh, two of those, they all cross over. So, Anna, John, and I are going to be gone that one th that third week in June. I don't know what you're all going to uh -oh. do yourselves. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Get some time off. There yeah. comes a game, Stavron. Good to see you. So, look, tell some flan stones in a future publication where they are uh, no longer spoiled. Yeah, that's that's awesome to hear, Gary. Hey, the Games Tavern, thank you so very much for rating in. Um, we're finishing up here. We do have one giveaway tonight: some classic D D reprints, exclamation point drawing. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate the raid in. Uh, hang out a little bit, which we're just talking about uh, talking about what's going on here. And uh, Josh will stream in everyone's place now. Uh, that. You, you, I'm gonna pretend I'm tattooed now at Fantasy Island. Yeah, well, you know, the plane, the plane, that ain't happening. And welcome, it's Fantasy Land. So, um, yep. Uh, LMA. So that's good. That's good. But uh, you're not you're not running LMAs for everything, though, are you, Rob? I mean, on the Tuesdays and stuff. I know he's going on vacation. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a blast here. All right. So what? Um, yeah, barbecue party at my house. What is going on? So. Why my guys find the name Sour Load funny? Because we're all childish, all right? But it's on the map. We'll finish this up, number 997. 998's done, just so you know. We ran out a, a week or two ago uh, in a special game. So, assistance to Sour Load. It is, a, it is a gnomish community, and they're going, they're trying to solve the issue that's coming up. And it turns out there is, of course... Derogar here. So they are in the middle, and the, there's all these strange monsters being summoned out of thin air, and they're trying to figure that out as well. And uh, uh, I thought I had it. Uh, where's the adventurer's log? Adventure. We are on number 997. When we finish this up, we'll have uh, one or two to go. Well, I kind of miscalculated the numbers, so I'm going to have to hide one or two beforehand. But just so you see uh, some of the build crafts, I want to show you this. This is the same picture. A note that that is uh, that is taken from the the, uh, the the glowing crystals. These are the same crystals. So we have it. We have it so that the colors can all fluctuate inside the crystals, which is really neat. So yeah. So uh, for the gem mines, pretty neat stuff going on uh, in the crafting world here. So you'll see that stuff tomorrow night. Uh, then Saturday. For you non D&Ders, &D uh, we got a Battletech game. Um, don't read the contract. The following community people are playing in it. Uh, right now, it is um, Kane Ancient Gamer, um, uh, Balfrin, Jim, uh, uh, Jimmy Duffy, Predators Rejects, and Alyssa Faden is playing in it again, too. Her, uh, along with uh, Tim and his son and my son. So that'll be fun. Yep, damn right. Yes, uh, it's out. Uh, they start in Solaris. They're in Solaris. That's where they're based. And then, the, don't read the contract. You'll have to see. I'm, it, this is all secretive stuff. Um, but they got some new mechs uh, that they can utilize. Um, and I, I got a, a twister too. And I guarantee it's going. It's going to be. I always say this. This is going to be the toughest one they've had so far. And of course, I'll probably kick my ass. Where in Greyhawk are those mech warriors? They are probably in the. I don't know. Where's it? Uh, they're probably up in the Egg of Coot hanging out there with the, the, the mechanical oh, aspect. Yeah. yeah. A week from Saturday in the morning, Nerdy Guide to D&D. &D, uh, those four young uh, Brits, um, 9 a.m. All right, that'll be adventure number 999. Uh, and uh, so I haven't even finalized the adventure yet. But all the characters are third or fourth level, so it's low level. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, for them, and then uh, <clears throat> the thousandth adventure is Saturday, June third, and we all know now uh, it, it, we're, I'm running um, 
I'm running two Melissa King in an eight hour session, eight to ten, nine hours actually. We're just going to start at 9 a.m. and just run and stream it until we're done. So, all my players just hanging out around the table uh, in an old school game. Um, Saturday, June 10th, the week after at Greenwood, it's a combination of Slav Squad, Squad, two drink minimum game, seven great players. Uh, and then the day, night after that, I have a special Gabin. James Jacobs is, is coming on and a Savage Tide Adventure Path discussion. We've never had that before. I can't nice. wait for this discussion. Yeah. And also, <clears throat> it turns out, uh, Casey, next week, in two two Wednesdays, I am out. I got to travel with a big wig from corporate. So two Wednesdays, Wednesday and Thursday, I'm out in two weeks. But next week, Sean Merwin's coming on for Keel and um, Living Greyhawk. That just, oh, that just awesome. hit for next week. Uh, and so that is what is going on. And I'll be on tomorrow night, 7.30. Uh, Reaper Mentors giveaways for tomorrow night, which is awesome. So last call for the giveaway. We'll do a, a classic module here. I have I have multiple treasures of Greyhawk, so if you don't have that, I recommend it. But I got some other stuff uh, for the winner. And then we're going to raid into Garner at Chaotic Good Gaming. Um off of this so uh get it in get it in let's see who wins all right like i said we'll have uh we'll have some nice giveaways tomorrow night from reaper like usual and then continue in i think everyone um who won got their uh winnings from the from the fifth anniversary stream with roger moore on sunday so here we go all right i'm going to close this out see who wins and then we will raid into see you all at the barbecue yeah um <laughs> That's funny. The winner tonight, Justinius. All right, Greg. Cool. Grats. Uh, who uh, told the story that he played next to a Michael? Uh, two two uh, Gary Consigo didn't even realize it, but played at my table with in a game this year. So, yep. All right, uh, Greg, get with me, and we'll see what you don't have yet. Uh, all right, um, whenever you want. So let's raid in. Yeah, hey, can't win all the time, man. But, you know, I give away stuff every stream. Um, I, 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 Dude, I have like 30. Look at this. <laughs> um, do you have Ghost Tower of Inverness? Do you have... Uh, I've, uh, yeah, do you have um, Tomoakon? Do you have either one of those? C1 or C2? Let me know. Uh, all right, you got those. All right, and we're going to go through all this. Uh, Borderland. Uh, I'm sorry, Border Watch. That's a good one, too, with a um, uh, Den of Thieves, uh, uh, Baltrans Beacon, another great one. See if you have any of those. Yep, so, aha, you'd like that, wouldn't you? All right, let's rate. Thank you for uh, the support tonight, and let's raid into Bane. You're. We did the drawing. Dogs. <laughs> One of these days, yes. Den Denethes is good too. So um, I'll see you all, Mike. Thanks a lot, man. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks. thanks awesome. For having oh, thank awesome you. Awesome discussion. Thanks, we'll see you all. See you all tomorrow night, seven thirty. If you can, uh, like I said, if you can lurk, that's great. We'll do some. Uh, do, have a fun. Have a fun game and have some uh, great giveaways. And uh, now I'm. I'm forgetting what the heck I'm supposed to be doing now. It's like you know. Uh, hit 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 that button. All right, let's raid into Chaotic Good Gaming tonight. A lot of you know Garner from Gary Khan. Yes. Looks like he's doing a Dragonlance game. That's cool. All right, over 70 going in. That's awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. See you tomorrow night. Thanks. Make sure that went. Yeah, looks like it. Good. Well, thanks again, guys. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. Trent.